Hello and welcome from Houch and Smith Stadium in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Graham Doty and Bob Bellin, happy to have you with us tonight. These two teams meeting for the first time. A week ago, Western Kentucky went on the road to Madison, Wisconsin, played a very good Wisconsin Badger team. Did some things they like, but they're happy to be back at home for their season opener. Well, they are. In fact, both of these teams kind of in opposite directions. If you look at the scores themselves from last week, and of course, Maine getting a big emotional win over New Hampshire. Not so much for Western Kentucky, but they took a lot out of that Wisconsin game they hope to bring here tonight. What do you think will be the biggest keys tonight for Western Kentucky? Well, for Western Kentucky, let's get a touchdown. And I know, again, it's, a, it's an upper-level FBS opponent they matched up against last week in Wisconsin, but they had a lot of drives, Graham, that stalled inside the 20, the red zone, inside the 30 as well, turnovers or turnover on downs. They just need to get a touchdown early to get this home crowd energized. I think that's very important. Bob, you touched on Maine. A huge win a week ago against their rival, New Hampshire. Really put it to New Hampshire. And, the, and they want to keep the momentum rolling tonight on the road. Well, they do. It's important. And momentum is the thing. It's when you capture it and you capture it as early as Maine did in their game last week against New Hampshire after the first two series back and forth, all of a sudden their defense triggered that. Got a couple of big turnovers, just became dominant in the game. They hope to carry that here uh, into Bowling Green tonight. And they are a very excited football team about the opportunity to come here and play an FBS opponent. What's the biggest thing you're looking forward to tonight from Maine? I think Maine needs to continue. It, it's easy to say, right, when you win a football game, continue what you were doing. But from about midway in the first quarter on last week, Maine did a lot of good things. Their defense really stymied. New Hampshire that knocked their quarterback out early. That had a lot to do with it, Graham, no doubt about that. But just being able to come out and just do what they do well. They've got a big, strong, sturdy quarterback, Western Kentucky as well. They feel like they're well suited to be in this football game. Let's take a look at some of the key players tonight. First for Western Kentucky, starting quarterback Drew Eccles earned his first start on the road against Wisconsin, and he played well last week, Bob. Well, he did, and back to my point, he's one of those big, sturdy quarterbacks, and he just didn't have a lot of help. He had a couple of bad penalties, again, when they were in the red zone, and that in and of itself didn't allow them to get that confidence and that momentum against Wisconsin. I think Eccles is a solid quarterback, not only for Western Kentucky, but inside of Conference USA. Defensively for Western Kentucky, Masai. White, he was everywhere last week at Wisconsin. Yeah, he was. And when you just look at the score, it's kind of underrated, right? But when you look at White and you really break that down, that's W-H-Y-T-E, by the way. When you break that down and look at where he was against a very good running attack in Wisconsin, he got it done last week defensively. And for Maine, Black Bears really want to get the football to Ernest Edwards. Edwards has the attention of the Western Kentucky coaching staff, Graham. When we talked about them uh, yesterday, and they used the terms best offensive weapon that Maine has, a beast, difficult to guard, don't let him get open, don't let him get separation, particularly in the middle of the field. Western Kentucky is very concerned from a defensive perspective about Ernest Edwards. And defensively for Maine, Sterling Sheffield, Reigning Defensive Player of the Week in the Colonial. Yeah, Sheffield got it going for him last week. If you'll if you recall, he had a sack and a pass breakup in the same series. Now, how often do you see that from a defensive player? I really like Sheffield when, you know, you turn on the tape and you watch a New Hampshire game. He's the guy that really jumped out at you defensively. Yes, they've got some other weapons there, but his ability to play all over the field, or at least in the, the dominant two-thirds of the field, really was a big difference. Head coaches for both of these teams, Mike Sanford in his second season. He is six and eight, the second youngest head coach in the FBS at 36 years old, only behind Lincoln Riley, who's 35 years old, head coach at Oklahoma. And the head coach in his third season in Maine is Joe Harasimiak. He's 11 and 11, also a young coach at 32 years old. So I'm really the old guy here, right? I mean, you're about <laughs> the age of those two guys that you just mentioned. So I really am feeling like the elder statesman. But both of these coaches, they bring energy. And that, that cannot be underrated because kids grab are attracted to that in the recruiting process. And they're like, this guy's going to get it done. We're underway from Bowling Green. And taking it out is Cray. And Cray makes a nice move, gets to the outside. He's at the 20, 25, and has knocked off his feet around the 30. An excellent return that. And we will see this Western Kentucky offense for the first time tonight. 
splits it off into the high second numbers again for Wisconsin last week. They may not come out as that impressive, but I can tell you, when talking to Mike Sanford, some of the things that he wanted to see as a result of that contest against Wisconsin, he was able to extrapolate that for that game. He's very pleased with he thinks in the direction they're headed. That was actually rough and on the return for Western Kentucky. First and 10, we get our first look at Drew Eccles. Eccles looks to throw on first down. He's got Lucky Jackson wide open. What a start for Western Kentucky as the Hilltoppers score on the first play of the game. Well, talk about the start. I was talking about the Western Kentucky leader. There you have it right there. On the outside, it's just a one-on-one -on -one right on the outside, and Jackson makes the end cut, and then goes around the numbers, a perfectly delivered football from Drew Eccles. Officially a 66-yard touchdown pass, Eccles to Lucky Jackson as the extra point. It's up, and it's good off the foot of Ryan Nuss. So 14-42. First quarter, 7-0 lead for Western Kentucky. As we'll step aside, we'll be back with more from Bowling Green after this. Ryan Nuss will kick it away here for Western Kentucky. Back deep to return for Maine. It's Ernest Edwards and Jeff Devon. Touchstone Ernest Edwards at the top. Really one of the playmakers for Maine. This is Edwards. Thought about it and will now take a knee. So Maine with the football for the first time tonight. First and 10 from their own 25 coming up. Well, Edwards really wanted to run that out, but it's such an advantage now with the new rule going to the 25-yard line. And in fact, he had moved parallel to the goal line, still had that second thought to try and run it out, not the case. Ferguson. He drops back to throw over the middle, and he's got his tight end, Drew Belcher. A first down on the first play of the game for Maine. Belcher with a career high, five catches a week ago. Yeah, Belcher is a converted quarterback. In fact, quarterbacked a lot of games for this main team, and then got beat out by Ferguson. Goes to the tight end H-back position. Had a fantastic game last week, and that time Western was more concerned about the edges and left the middle of the field open. That was good for 16 yards. Joe Fitzpatrick, the tailback. There's Edwards in motion. First handoff of the day to Joe Fitzpatrick, and the junior rumbles his way for a short pickup. Fitzpatrick a week ago, 17 carries, 80 yards, and a touchdown. He was tackled by Carson Jordan. This is the main team. We'll see a one-two punch in the backfield with true freshman Ramon Jefferson and Joe Fitzpatrick. They were both very effective a week ago against New Hampshire.
play action for Ferguson. Ferguson on the rollout, fires incomplete over the head of Jaquan Blair. And this is kind of the main offense that you should expect tonight. Saw a lot of it last week, a lot of misdirection. They ran Anderson to both ends, Edwards rather, to both ends of the formation. They wanted to get a little flood pass out, seven, eight yards behind the line of scrimmage but instead he was double covered. So immediately Edwards picked up that double coverage and Ferguson had to go deep incomplete. A week ago, Maine went five for 13 on third down, 38%. Black Bears have third and seven here from their own 44. Empty set for Ferguson. Hilltoppers with a blitz. It's intercepted by Key, and Key has one man to beat. A nice cut move. Edwards can't get him. Key takes it all the way. A pick six for Devin Key. What a start for Western Kentucky. Could you have scripted it any better? Maine has the first down on the pass. It's off the fingertips, and Key is right there and took the very same route for the touchdown earlier that we saw with Jackson, this time on the defensive side. Well, I tell you what, Western Kentucky clicking with all cylinders here in the first three minutes. Player late getting out on the field for Maine. The extra point by Nuss is good. So with 13-17 to play in the first quarter, Western Kentucky leading Maine 14-0. And as you alluded to, Bob, really can't script it any better for the Hilltoppers. No, it makes uh, makes you wonder as you stand here in the box, Graham, it's probably going to be time to go ahead and uh, get deep in the material tonight. Western Kentucky has been dynamite early on. And that was just bad misfortune by Maine, but that's what happens because keep in perspective, they got a lot of breaks last week as well. And they were expecting the very same thing here tonight to be able to get a break or two to go your way, especially when you're on the road. That's crucial. So with the break on the field, we'll take on as well. Two touchdown lead for West Kentucky back after this. We are stronger together. We push each other to excel. In the classroom, on the field, in the community. Together, we are committed. Uplifting, strong, and authentic. We are building the next generation, and we are doing it our way. Stronger together. Working towards the same vision. This is the CUSA way. strong we are authentic on the field in the classroom in the community it's not just something we do it's how we live it's our work always pushing one another working towards the same vision stronger together this is the CUSA way the flat path is easy but for the inspired there is a spirit that kindles a desire to climb higher. The soul, the road to reach new heights. The wish to be a part of something more, to do more and to be more. Hilltoppers know that life at the top is worth the climb. Climb with us at Western Kentucky University. Jordan Swan with the return for Maine, takes it up to the 21-yard line. 14-0 lead for West Kentucky. So, Bob, looking at the Black Bears here, down early already by two touchdowns. What do you want to see offensively from Maine? Do not abandon what you were trying to drive around. You got a first down with a big play to Belcher in the middle of the pass. And then from that point in time, you had a tip all Perfect just bad man. luck. But it's Old not Black time Bears. to abandon your game plan. 
So here's Chris Ferguson. That interception, by the way, a 45-yard interception return for a touchdown, the second ever in the Mike Sanford era at West Kentucky. Ferguson hands it off. First time we've seen Ramon Jefferson tonight, and Jefferson not a lot of room off that right side. Might have lost a yard. Joe Haramishiak can find Jefferson as home run hitter. The big play, big run guy. Blown out the tackle. Just got bottled up on the back. Play. Second down and 11. Ferguson, the sophomore from Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. His third year in the program. One for three so far tonight. Scans the field, now in trouble, and down he goes. The first sack of the night. That's Jeremy Darwin, the sophomore from Nashville, Tennessee, and his second sack on the season. Right, but they're really playing behind the sticks here in this series. Third and 17 for Maine. 0 for 1 already tonight on third down. And this time they play conservative, a handoff to Jefferson. And Jefferson, not a lot of room there at all off that right side. Fourth down. Ben Holt, on the tackle for the Western stands at pretty good starting field position here. In the three Worst conditions that we have right now. Here's a look at the freshman punter, David Gelb. He had eight punts a week ago against New Hampshire, averaged 32 yards a punt along of 43. Cray back deep for Western Kentucky. Much better punt this week as Cray backpedals, makes the fair catch at his own 41. Well, Bob, last time the Hilltoppers had it, one play, one touchdown. They might try a home run ball here in this situation too, because you got an opponent, and it's kind of odd to say this at this point in time of the game, but you got an opponent on the ropes right now. You might want to go ahead and, particularly if you have a solid running game like Western has, you might try and throw the home run ball here as well and really put Maine in a hole and then Hand it over to your running game as the game progresses. So 10.57 to play in the first quarter. West Kentucky leading 14 to zero. One thing we have yet to allude to tonight for this main defense, which was so good a week ago, only giving up 108 yards against New Hampshire. They are without two of their star linebackers and Tagui Lowe and Jerron Grainer. We'll talk about that more when we come back. Two touchdown lead for West Kentucky. We'll step aside. We'll be back with more after this. Hilltoppers start this drive with a one-yard run by DeAndre Furby. Now Eccles drops back to throw over the middle, and it's caught for first down in main territory by the tight end. Myquan Dean had one catch a week ago, the senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Lots of success for both of these teams in the middle of the field early on, and after the run while we were away a break, again Eccles going back to the air. From the main 37, Black Bears are showing blitz. Looks like Eccles' season wants to make a change. Now they're going to move Hart back into the middle of the field as a deep safety. Back on the ground of Furby. Furby with a nice run. Furby lowers his head, rumbles his way to the 21. A gain of 15 on the run by DeAndre Furby. And this is a Hilltopper team a season ago. Their longest run was 19 yards. Yeah, and it's good to see Furby's on the cover of the program tonight. But Maine defensively did anticipate and schematically anticipated the run for Western Kentucky. They only had Hart back deep. Basically had 10 in the box and still unable to make the stop. Eccles 
Eccles being pressured from behind. He spins free, plants his feet and fires. A flag is thrown. It's caught by Jernigan. He stopped inside the five. A flag is all the way back at the 34. Yeah, there's at least two holds protecting Eccles in the offensive backfield. And only thing that could have made that play worse for Western Kentucky is that they had scored because this one is no doubt coming back. Official tonight is Ken Ante. First penalty against Western Kentucky a week ago. The Hilltoppers had six for 65 yards. Against a very good team in number four, Wisconsin. And some of those, as I mentioned time and time again in the broadcast, happen in the red zone where offensive holds or a personal foul in one case. So now second and 20. Eccles wide open again, just off the fingertips of Xavier Lane, the sophomore from Montgomery, Alabama. If he catches it, that's another touchdown for Eccles. Boy, big confusion in the main secondary then. Manny Patterson bit on the Eccles rollout to the left, and he went straight toward the quarterback. He's actually the only defender in that side of the boundary trying to make the tackle on the perceived run by Eccles, and instead they Roll the receiver out and Eccles just did not make a good throw in that situation. And one thing to keep in mind on it is absolutely pouring on the field now. The rain held off all the way up until kickoff as Eccles all the time in the world. Eccles again wide open. Touchdown number two for Lucky Jackson. 20-0 Western Kentucky. It's a 32-yard strike. So Patterson defensively is having a lot of problems. And, and if you're Maine, you need to be very concerned about that because for the most part, Western Kentucky is not showing some exotic looks, Graham. They're just coming up, lining up, because they do have that physical prowess in being able to do that. But Patterson that time, even in the uh, scramble of sorts by Eccles, just kind of flushed out, left his man in the secondary. Jackson wide open in the end zone. Extra point is good. 21 to zero lead for Western Kentucky. Maine will try to respond when we return back to Bowling Green. Welcome back to Houchin Smith Stadium. Graham Doty, Bob Belvin, happy to have you with us tonight. And what a fast start for Western Kentucky. 21 to zero lead. And it's come with big plays on the offense, a defensive pick six. And actually they gave a touchdown up in the corner on the holding call as well. So it's been all Western first six minutes of the game. Jordan Swan, another return across the 15, spins and is chopped down by Xavier Lane. And now Maine really trying to get on track offensively. So far tonight, the Black Bears only 14 total yards of offense. Yeah, actually at 16, but negative two on the rush side of it. And you still, you know, again, back to when do you abandon your game plan and start throwing it over the yard? You still at some point in time, ought to be able to run a little bit of clock here and get a little consistency. And I believe that comes from the run game. This front four of Western has been very dominant. In fact, you know, Mike Sanford talked about how well they played last week against Wisconsin, and he felt like that would carry over into tonight. Hand off to Jefferson. Jefferson with room and plows his way across the 25, stopped at the 27. Best run of the game so far for Maine. No doubt. And just continue to do that. You know, it's easy to say it's actually going to be a first down run. And that's easy to say if you're if you're sitting up here in this position high and dry, right, Graham? But you, you just got to be able to have a couple of wins here at some point in time if you're Maine. And getting that first down run in by Jefferson certainly helps. Yeah, you touch about the rain and the weather. What's the biggest thing you want to focus on when it's just pouring down like this? Well, you've got to run. You've got to shorten your routes if you in a passing situation. That's why it's so important to run the ball here. And they're continuing to do that. Well, Maine is in, in this situation. Uh, and I think you've got to 
you, you got to get over being shell shocked a little bit by being down 21 nothing as well. And again, those are intangibles in the game. And then you add the weather in. And, you know, if you're main, you got, man, everything is working against me. Well, it is right now. You've got to do something to get smaller wins as you build. And the way they're running the football here, at least in the first two snaps from scrimmage, kind of lend it to being able to do that. Second and two back on the ground of Jefferson. A lot of room off that right side. Jefferson in Western Kentucky territory finally stopped Jefferson. at the 42, brought down by the safety, DeAndre Ferris, one of the team captains for the Hilltoppers. And again, Jefferson bouncing to the outside, back to what we talked about, about the main head coach, and that was Jefferson is our home run hitter, and he has been fantastic the first three times that Maine has snapped the football in this series. It's a 22-yard run for Jefferson. You know, now and as a play caller, you're like, man, we're running the ball so well. Let's don't forget we got Edwards and Belcher, but the tendency is to continue doing what you're having success with. Here's a look at the other running back, Joe Fitzpatrick, and he just barrels his way inside the 40. Brought down by Takori and Darden, the junior from Russellville, Kentucky. Walk on player earned her scholarship for the Hilltoppers. That's a nice run on first down. I see, you're gonna see how different this main offense is, or any offense for that matter. When you get five yards on first down, it really opens up a lot of things. And now I'm beginning to see this confident main football team we saw last week against New Hampshire. That's Young in motion. They give to Young and Young gets did at the 35 by Jarrell Green. Honorable mention Conference USA a season ago. He had seven tackles last week against Wisconsin. Yeah, Young has got to finish that run, Graham. He pulled up a little bit and Green unloaded on him right at the first down marker. You can see he's a yard short at that point in time. Young's got to have the wherewithal to just lower that shoulder and get that extra yard because now you have a complex defense that you have to look against in third and short. Maine tonight on third down 0 for 2. And just as soon as Maine changes at the line of scrimmage, Western's going to bring up another side person in the box here and look at right here. Jefferson stays on his feet though. He lunges Jefferson forward and this will depend on the spot. Eli Brown in on the stop. He's short. The linesman came up at the 34. They need to get to the 33. This may be four down territory already, I though, think for it Maine. Is. Well, once again, Young's inability to get that first down when he clearly had it on second down a moment ago puts you in this situation right here. In fact, if Young had just angled out and got inside the marker and gone out of bounds, he would have had a first down at that case. Maine did not go up for it on fourth down a week ago. They're going to throw for it here in a first down run by Ferguson. A heads up play by the sophomore quarterback picks it up with his feet stopped by Ben Holt. Yeah, I like I like the quarterback. I like the sophomore and I like the play right here. You know, Ferguson didn't take a lot of time. Option one, option two, they were covered. A little bit of a gap. I know in my mind I've got about a yard to get. I can get it. I'm a big sturdy quarterback. I like that move. That's a big conversion for Maine. Black Bears doing it on the ground on this drive. First and 10 from the West Kentucky 31. Ferguson floats one one on one coverage. He's looking for Young and Young can't come up with it. Nice coverage on a play by Roger Cray, the sophomore from Lake City, Florida. Yeah, mark that one down. You'll come back to that one later because again, Young didn't have that final burst of speed he needed to get to the end zone. Ball was well thrown by Ferguson. It was to a spot in the end zone about two yards in, and Young just didn't get to the ball in time. And that time, interesting, Western had a blitz called on first down. So there's something that they've seen in the main alignment, even on first down, that they felt themselves defensively they were going to see a pass. Ferguson threw for over 2,000 yards a season ago. We got whistles. This play's blown dead. So we're back to playing behind the sticks here. It's the first penalty tonight against Maine. Prior to this drive, Maine only had 14 total yards 
of offense. Ninth play upcoming. 52 yards on this drive already for the Black Bears. And one of the good elements of the drive, baby, Drew Eccles is sitting on the Western bench. He's been fantastic here first quarter. On second and 15, Ferguson in trouble and takes a hit. Down he goes at the 40. The hit delivered by D'Angelo Malone, the sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. We had a chance to visit with the Hilltopper defensive coordinator, Clayton White, and he had a lot of big things to say about D'Angelo Malone. And he's been coaching him up uh, in the past weeks, and he thinks Malone will be able to deliver. He had four tackles last week, but one of the things that he did say about Malone was he's added to his game. So he's been able to get in that three-point stance. In the past, he's been a stand-up rusher from the edge. Now he's putting his hand in the dirt, as we say, and he has added some elements to his game. Ferguson over the middle and a vicious hit on Devin Young at the 35. That's Eli Brown, the Kentucky transfer, making his presence felt. And Joe Harasimiak is out saying that was a blow to the head. We'll take a look at this one. Have to watch it on the Jumbotron. That looks like at the shoulder. What do you think? Yeah, bang, bang play, but it does not look like Eli Brown led with the helmet. No flag down on the field, but the big thing is you hope Devin Young is okay. Still down on the field for the Black Bears. Clock is stopped with 356 in the opening quarter. A quarter that has been all Western Kentucky leading by three touchdowns. Now this is a big element. I mean, beside the, the blow that Young took, he's a big part of their offense. Kind of a roar on the other side of the field. Obviously, it's a very dominant Hilltopper crowd here, but below us, there, there's concern because they're closest. And now a great round of applause. But I think it was bang, bang. <laughs> I guess the uh, Jumbotron operators have been told not to show it again. <laughs> so that may be an indication. Wow. One way or the other that was a, quick a vicious one. hit. Yeah. And hopefully Devin Young will be okay for Maine. It is fourth and 18, and the second punt of the night coming up for the Black Bears. And we'll keep our eye on him. He's gone to the bench. He's with the offensive group. Young is on the sideline. Roger Cray back deep. Gelb's first punt went 41 yards. Roger Cray deep. Cray only had one return against Wisconsin a week ago for negative two yards. This time he will let it bounce over his head and it takes a main roll and will be down at the eight yard line. Excellent punt by David Gelb. That's the first punt of his career down inside the 20. Good special teams work then by Maine. Now they got to go to work defensively. They got to find a way to throttle Eccles, whether it's uh, pressure from the outside, pressure up the middle, some kind of variance in their looks defensively because in the first two series, Maine's just not getting it done defensively. And a big part of that is the two linebackers out and Tagui Lowe and Jerron Grayer. Lowe's a guy that had seven tackles a week ago. Grayer was a finalist for the Jerry Rice Award a season ago, which is awarded to the top freshman in the FCS. So here comes the Hilltopper offense back out on the field. First and 10 starting this drive from their own eight. Eccles gets rid of it quickly, finds his tight end. Dean, that's his second catch of the night, picks up about five. Knocked out of bounds by Otero, one of those new linebackers that is in for Tagilo tonight. And that's the equivalent of being able to run the football, Graham, when you're just able to throw that down and out, and get about four, four and a half, maybe five on first down. Once again, in any offense, that opens up a lot of opportunities. Uh, Trigg with a carry. First time that we've called his name tonight. A week ago, he had four carries for three yards against Wisconsin. Trigg is the short yardage guy. Talk to Mike Sanford of Western Kentucky. He was their fourth leading rusher last season. 
And again, when they need to convert on second down, they bring Trigg in, he bangs it, gets the plus one yard that they need to move the sticks. Play clock under 10. Eccles looks near side, caught by Jernigan. Jernigan tackled immediately. He will be a yard or two shy of the line of game. Brought down by Manny Patterson, the junior from Baltimore, Maryland. Led the Colonial Athletic Association with 17 pass breakups a season ago. And he's been terrorized, as I mentioned, here in the first quarter tonight. But that time he gets wrapped up. He's right there about the time the ball got there. Just a quick throw by Eccles in that case. Eccles keeps it for the first time tonight and runs for first down for the Hilltoppers, tackled by Deshaun Stevens. Eccles a week ago was the leading rusher for West Kentucky when he ran for 38 yards, and he's very good at that. You may see two and three quarterbacks tonight for, for Western. I mean, Eccles is their guy going in. He talked about Stevens. He had eight tackles last week, team leader against New Hampshire out of that Mike linebacker position. You'd like to see that Mike linebacker chasing that quarterback down in space. First and 10 play action for Eccles and he connects with Jernigan for first down. A nice move for Jernigan as he takes it up to midfield before he stopped by Manny Patterson. And what a one situation created on the outside for Jernigan and with his size, Maine coming up the middle with pressure. And if you want to do the comparison, main DBs against Western receivers, they advantage Western receivers both in size and experience. That's DeAndre Furby on the carry, a short pickup. Furby's a guy, he's been excellent throughout his career. He made the Conference USA freshman team, but then ran into some injury bugs, led the team in rushing a season ago. And they really stifled him last week in Madison, did Wisconsin, and. He's looking to break out tonight. And like I mentioned, he's on the program cover tonight <laughs> at Halchin Stadium. Don't know whether that's a jinx or not. It's pretty early. We'll see. Eccles wants to take a shot as he's looking for Sloan. It's incomplete, and that's who Coach Sanford said has an excellent chance to be the deep play threat in his career for Sloan, just a sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia. And Shaquille, Shaquille St. Lot with a push in the secondary right then and really got away with one and really disrupted that route. This is the first third down for Western Kentucky tonight and it comes with 52 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Oh, it's fair to say they're not accustomed to this. <laughs> Eccles on the move, those near side incomplete, looking for his tight end, Dean, and there's a nice stop by the main defense. And when you got that pressure, good point, Graham, when you got that pressure up the middle, Maine bought six that time, bought two off the edge, and you know, again, these DBs have had troubles in coverage so far tonight against these taller, bigger, stronger, more physical Western receivers, but that time, pressure is your friend, and it goes incomplete. First punt of the night for the Retcher Junior, Alex Ranella had six punts against Wisconsin a week ago where he averaged 35 yards a punt. Micah Wright back deep to return for Maine. He has two punt returns for a touchdown in his career. Signals for fair catch. The ball takes a main roll and will finally be down by a Hilltopper player at the 27th. So 34 seconds left in the opening quarter. Western Kentucky up by three touchdowns. Last time Maine had the football though, Bob, they were able to move the ball down the field, especially running it. And, and again, their inability to convert when they got inside the 30. They got the first down on the run by Ferguson and then had a penalty. And then that really put them behind the chains again. And then that Subsequent penalty moved them out of field goal range. They just need some points here. I think they've stabilized the game. That's fine, but you're still trailing by 21, so you've got to put some points on the board. Ferguson so far tonight throwing the football for Maine, just one for five, 16 yards, and an interception that was taken to the house by Devon Key. 
Back on the ground of Jefferson, and Jefferson angles to the near side, stopped at the 31 by Drell Green. This may be the final play of the first quarter, depending how quickly Maine wants to move here. Again, if the last two drives are any indication, Maine getting it done on first down, and I'd still like the misdirection by Maine. And, you know, you can scout that. You can, we can move ahead to week seven. You can still scout it. But still, when you're playing it live and you get that kind of misdirection, those counterplays, they can be real effective. First quarter in the books from Bowling Green. It's all Western Kentucky so far. 21-0 lead for Maine. Second and five for the Black Bears when we return. Welcome back to Houch and Smith Stadium. Bowling Green, Kentucky, a rainy night, but fireworks for this West Kentucky offense and defense after one quarter of play. 21-0 lead for the Hilltoppers. Maine second and five, and Ferguson floats one incomplete. Nobody home, just airmailed it Ferguson at the 45. Closest complete. receiver was Micah Wright. He thought Wright was going to roll off five. of the corner uh, with the pressure over there against the Kentucky, Western Kentucky defender rather, and he just did not do that. Kind of stayed right in this spot, did right. Once again, you got away from running the football that you've done well on first down to that point. And sometimes coaches just outthink themselves. Main That's tonight, 0 for 4 on third down, and Ferguson unloads down the sideline. It's incomplete. Threw it into double coverage. That was Bailey in on the coverage for Western Kentucky. Now, that was not intended to be a back shoulder throw. In fact, Ferguson just threw it short. And in that case, Maine still had a chance to catch football there, but just unable to convert at that point in time and come back and get the football. And a very bad series precipitated by not being able to run the football for Maine. Punt number three coming up for David Gelb. Roger Cray, the return man. This is where you have to be careful, especially in the pouring down rain. Good snap, good punt by Gelb as Cray makes the fair catch at his own 31. Yeah, why take any chances in the special teams game when you've been playing as well offensively as Western has to this point? You allude to the offense, Bob, 175 total yards, 150 of that through the air for the Hilltopper so far. And I would suspect that they're going to go back to that in this series, too. One thing coming into this game that head coach Mike Sanford told us, we would see one running back have one series, and Coach Sanford really wants to see one of those running backs makes the next step moving forward for the rest of the season. He wants to see somebody stand out. And here we go, a first run of the night, first run of the drive, short pickup, a gain of a yard. That is Garland LaFrance. He's a freshman from New Orleans, went to the same high school as Tyron Matthew and Leonard Fournette. It's pretty good company. That's a good pipeline coming out of the bayou. And that time he did not separate himself in that running back race. Only one yard on first down. Wide open, that's one Eccles would love to have back. He had his tight end, third and nine. Yeah, that's a pass at his shoelaces. If it's at the numbers, it may have been a touchdown in that case. And again, that's just a little waggle right in between. That's safety in the corner right in the middle of the field. And just about a yard short was the throw. Hilltopper tonight 0 for 1 on third down. Eccles gets rid of it quickly. He's got his running back, LaFrance, a short pickup. It's fourth down. It's a nice tackle in the open field by Maine. And that is Sheffield. We've been looking for him. Talked about him in the open. Looking for him all night long. And uh, that's the kind of physical, athletic kind of plays he's capable of. He caught the running back in the open field. 
prevented him from making a first down. Micah Wrights back deep to return the punt for Maine. And the punt by Ranella is a booming punt as Wright signals for a fair catch, backpedaling at his own 15. We may see. Isaiah Robinson was warming up earlier. It looks like Ferguson is going to come out here. We'll have to wait and see how much longer they'll stay with Ferguson. I'm a little surprised at seeing the number two quarterback warm up for Maine. But wait and see if we got it coming back. 13-23, it's the second quarter. Three touchdown lead for West Kentucky. Twenty-one zero lead for Western Kentucky main offense trotting back out on the field. And Ferguson is in a quarterback, as Bob alluded to before he went to break. Robinson was warming up on the sideline. Ferguson stays in. Ferguson tonight just one for seven for 16 yards. He's got Fitzpatrick on his left hip, but I, I think this situation now another change. We try and run the football. Screen to Young, and Young crosses the 30, rather the 20. Knocked down at the 22 by Mobley. Draquan Mobley is senior from Louisville, Kentucky. One tackle a week ago, he won two state titles in high school. Another one of these players that was a walk-on who earned a scholarship. Another reason why I'm up in the box, too. I felt like they would run the football in that situation. A little quick screen out and again five right at five on first down. Glad to see this guy carrying the football back in the game. Young might have got grabbed by the face mask. A flag is thrown. Young is stopped at the 16. This may be a face mask as Malone was one of the first ones that got to him. So a defensive penalty will bail a negative rush. Failed Maine out rather of a negative rush and Maine so far in terms of running the football. And they're 13 of 52 rushing the football, but this is a big penalty, Graham. It takes it all the way out to the 38. Yeah, it really is. The penalty on Drell Green, the senior. Not a lot of penalties in this game. That's only the second one against Western Kentucky. So now it's first down for the Black Bears at their own 38. 68 yards of total offense for Maine so far. Well, watch Belcher in the left slot right there. It's kind of gotten away from him recently and he's still blocking in this situation. Physical run for Joe Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick brought down by Masai White. Touched on him at the top. He had a career high 11 tackles against Wisconsin. Yeah, you talk about shining last week. That's what White did. And the way the way Wisconsin runs the football, you have to give props to that. 11 tackles against the number four team in the nation. Another handoff to Fitzpatrick. Spins off one defender before finally being tackled a yard shy of the line of gain. Stopped by Devin Key, who had the pick six earlier. Payne's been running the short side of the field, and now you have a crucial, a crucial third down for Maine. They want to be able to keep the football in, in the plus side of the field. Been 0 1 on third down so far. Let's see what they do here. Another handoff to Fitzpatrick. Leaps in the air, flips for the first down. He got hit by Masai White. You don't see that happen every day. Well, if Fitzy, as he liked to call him, Fitzpatrick. The o lineman loses his helmet here. The situation there was the way White hit him and flipped him actually catapulted him to the first down. First down if White just squares up with the shoulders and just stops forward progress, that's not necessarily what you're taught to do that situation. So White just trying to make a play <laughs> and Fitzpatrick going airborne. That was a starting right guard. Liam Dobson has to come off the field for a play after he lost his helmet. Play action for Ferguson. 
Near side, a leaping catch is made by Jaquan Blair, but he's out of bounds. It bears in on the coverage, the senior from Shelbyville, Kentucky. Honorable mention Conference USA last year. And that was one of those back shoulder throws that was intentional in nature. And Maine just unable to execute it in that situation. Second and 10 for the Black Bears. These two teams meeting for the first time. Maine coming off the dominating win against New Hampshire last week, 35 to 7. Jefferson with a nice move and a lot of room down the near sideline. Jefferson at the five. Does he stay in in the end zone? The officials get together. Still no signal yet. The pie line is knocked down. The ball did come out in the back of the end zone. Graham, how can you be that indecisive for so long? Uh, clearly, we're going to have to review this one. Still no signal has been ruled yet. On if he's down inside the three or if this will be a touchdown. So let's talk about the biggest play of the night by Maine. When Jefferson comes out in the flat, the blitz came from exactly the area he vacated. Early on the field was a fumble and the play and went out of the back end Wow. Wow. The official Ken Ante just said it's a fumble recovered by West Kentucky or the ball went out of the back in the end zone and now they will review this one. Clearly, and this is where the review works. So that's what they were talking about. It wasn't the fact that he crossed the line because he did, but if the ball left his possession before he crosses the line and it goes out of the back of the end zone, it is indeed a touchback. So uh, maybe it wasn't the biggest play of the night for Maine. Wow. This will be has anything gone their way in the first half? Yeah, this will be fascinating to see what these referees determine after this instant replay review. So Jefferson with the nice move. It's a nice block on the outside. And now the push. The question was, did he have possession when he crossed the goal line? And at that point, if he has it when it crosses the goal line, then it indeed should be a touchdown, despite what happened afterwards, right? It's so hard to see from this angle, though. You just can't see if the ball is coming out or if he crossed the goal line. But the important thing to remember is the call on the field is a touchback, and it has to be overwhelming evidence to overturn that. So the camera were on the facing the ball instead of at the position it was at as Patterson comes across the goal line. Wow. And the main offense is staying out on the field. Western Kentucky, their defense is on the field, if that matters. But this is a long review, first review of the night. This is a huge play for it Maine. Is. You're going to look at it and look at it and look at it. Here comes the official ruling done. from Ken Ante. There's the break that Maine needed. Yep. You bet. And th that was my point. Had it crossed the line in his possession, despite what happened there afterwards, it's just kind of get across that little white line. Nice play by Jefferson. Again, going into the area, nice throw by Ferguson too. Seeing where that blitz was coming from, that area was open, and Jefferson did what he needed to do. He broke one tackle, and that was getting by Samuel. That's a touchdown. This is Kenny Doak going for the extra point. The sophomore went three for five against New Hampshire. We got flags as this play is blown dead. So now another question. Do you go for two here if you're Maine? And they're considering it. They're making some personnel 
changes, if you will, on the uh, on their sideline of kind of putting some players on alert. I've always been intrigued by this situation, too, because it's really tempting. I mean, a yard and a half at that part in the field makes a big difference. It really does. Another long conversation about this penalty. An eventful first half between Western Kentucky and Maine tonight. And just when we thought this game was going to settle down a little bit. We... Start offense, number 69, five-yard penalty. Well, so much for going for two here. <laughs> <laughs> that was on the right guard, Liam Dobson, by the way. Remember, he had to come out. He lost his helmet earlier on this drive. So now this will make the extra point just a little bit more challenging for Kenny Doak. Kick is up, it's good. And Maine is on the board. 10-20 to play in the second quarter. Western Kentucky 21, Maine seven after a 51-yard touchdown pass. Ferguson to Ramon Jefferson. Your home for cosmetic, family, and sedation industry. Visit their website at ChandlerParkDentalCare.com. Go top! Packed house tonight 31, at the Houch. Great crowd. We miss Cage the Elephant. Yeah, big band. But we could hear them. Big band played before kickoff. Cage the Elephant, natives of Bowling Green, won the Grammy last year for best rock album. They played in about an hour before kickoff. On the return, this is Deontay Ruffin for the Hilltoppers. Works his way to the 29. So far tonight offensively for Drew Eccles, he has been fantastic. He's seven for 11, 151 yards and two touchdown passes. And just talk about patience. That is what Drew Eccles has done throughout his career. The fifth year senior earned his first start of his career last week at Wisconsin. Drew Eccles and Oklahoma State's Taylor Cornelius are the only two players in the NCAA to earn their first career starts after signing with the school and being a fifth year senior. That's remarkable. A lot of played before him. And finally now he's getting his opportunity. He's making the most of it tonight. Here's the freshman Garland on the jet sweep and Garland runs for 11 to move the sticks for West Kentucky as he was brought down by Deshaun Stevens and Connor Walsh. It's a quarterback's best friend, that jet sweep and you get 13, 14 on first down. 13 on play. And then still, again, had those big play wide receivers to be able to mix in. Good combination for Drew Eccles in the red. Lucky Jackson in motion in the slot on the bottom of your screen. Two touchdown catches tonight for Jackson. Here's a handoff to Joshua Samuel, another one of these talented running backs. He had three carries for 13 yards last week, tackled again by Deshaun Stevens. A lot of praise from head coach Mike Sanford on Joshua Samuel. He said he has the potential to be an every down back for the Hilltoppers in his career. And I like the right tackle Mike Pates or Miles Pates block their seal on the outside there and on the jet sweep to sweep the play before. We've got to give those big guys in the O-line credit. Another first down catch by the tight end, Mike Wan Dean. Dean, the transfer from Northeastern Oklahoma A&M. Did not play football until he was a junior in high school. Didn't even play tight end in high school. He was a wide receiver and a running back, but he's found himself a home as a tight end for the Hilltoppers. Now we're starting to see Eccles spread the ball across the field. We're seeing some different names in this offense. And now we're seeing a drive in which Western Kentucky just kind of wants to take control and just kind of unleash all that they have. Eccles weaving through all the traffic. Being pressured, he avoids it and will just tiptoe out of bounds. And that's what Eccles can do for this Western Kentucky offense. Not something they've been able to do in years past. Mike White, pocket passer, now a Dallas yeah. Cowboy. Eccles can take off and run like that. Well, in this case, this is positive yardage. I mean, he got down to three read progressions, maybe even four, Graham, at that point in time, and just had enough speed to beat that big defensive lineman coming down, slip outside, Two and a half yards, perfectly fine, positive yardage on first down. 
Handoff to Samuel, and Samuel runs his way to the 37. And Samuel runs away from Deshaun Stevens, who was on the run blitz for Maine. And Maine had the right play called in terms of the run blitz because Stevens was coming right through that hole, and he just kind of slid to the other side. Picked up a couple yards. Very manageable third down upcoming here for Western. Hilltoppers 0 for 2 tonight on third down. It's a new quarterback in as well for the Hilltoppers here. On the run, up the middle, getting close to the first down. First career carry for Kavarius Thomas, talented quarterback. Played at Lakeland High School in Lakeland, Florida, where he played for a 6A state title. He's the highest ranked high school recruit to ever sign at Western Kentucky. And again, situational. Now we bring Eccles back in. He was in to run that football on third down and get the first down he did. Eccles back in, this time under center. And a little bit of razzle-dazzle here. The Hilltoppers get it in the hands of Lucky Jackson, who scored twice tonight. That time, not a lot there. Only a gain of two, tackled by St. Lott, the freshman from Montreal. Yeah, I tell you what, that play looked like it had a lot of potential from Western. Of course, from the angle we're at, and we could see that misdirection that Western showed in that case, and they got Jackson to the outside. And St. Lott wasn't the first there was able to wrap him up. That's a big play by Maine. I'm telling you, he was on the outside, and Lucky was letting it get lucky again. Coach Sanford told us last week, Lucky Jackson, he touched the opening play of the game. He touched the ball, and the next time he touched it against the Badgers was in the fourth quarter, so Coach Sanford was trying to get him the ball more. I'd say mission accomplished tonight on that. Agree. As Eccles throws across his body, really tried to fit one in there, incomplete, searching for his tight end again, and Mike Juan Dean. And Dean comes all the way across the formation, and Eccles rolls to his left, a right-handed quarterback. So that had all the ingredients of a play. Uh, it looked to be big yardage, but Eccles just a little too long on the throw. And another third down for Western Kentucky. Last week just converted 31% against the Badgers tonight, one for six. It's third and nine. That's Jackson in motion. And Eccles this time in trouble and down he goes all the way back at the 40. As this time he was brought down by Mozai Nelson with his first sack tonight. And Nelson makes a defensive play of the night so far for Maine right then. And that time, that was pretty much a covered sack then by Maine. When Jackson came to the far side of the formation, the DBs rubbed off and they changed and they slid out to meet him. And you can see not a lot of options there for Eccles and a big defensive play by Maine. Punt number three coming up here for Western Kentucky. Micah Wright back deep to return the punt for the Black Bears. As Ranella's kick will skip at the six and bounce into the end zone for a touchback. Feeling a little momentum shift here. It's a big stop for the main defense, isn't it? Big stop in the fact that the ball was kicked out of the end zone. Go back to the 20. Maine will try to capitalize on offense when we return to Hutchins Stadium in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Twenty-one seven lead for Western Kentucky. Maine offense back out on the field starting this drive from their own 20. So here's Chris Ferguson and company back out there. Maine has been able to run the football tonight, 63 yards rushing after they were very effective last week with 203 on the ground. And here is Micah Wright. Brother Jefferson on the carry, brought down by Antoine Kincaid. Jefferson tonight been a bright spot for the Black Bears, and he has a fantastic future in store for him. He does, and I like the way they use him, Graham. I mean, obviously he had the big catch out of the backfield and run for that controversial touchdown. and. Uh, now they just give him straight old fashioned handoff and kind of accustomed to and you know when you have playmakers you need to find ways to get them the football. Maine has done just that. 
Ferguson will try to tuck it and run, and he will not escape the arms of Robert Crawford, I believe, one of the first ones in on the stop along with Jawan Jones. Jones and Crawford a double up, if you will, in the corner. On the replacement left tackle out there on that corner there, and that's a big part of that sack just then on Ferguson. So, I, you know, I talked about maybe a shift in momentum right here. Uh, main, no doubt, must convert on this third down. We have yet to see Maine go to their top two wide receivers so far in this first half, and Ernest Edwards and Micah Wright, neither one of them have touched the football. Another penalty marker down on the field. This looks like it'll be on Maine, and if it is, this will make the third and very long coming up. Costly penalty. I'll add Belcher to that list of receivers that have kind of been missing in action. While Belcher does indeed have a catch tonight, you know, he's a perfect kind of possession safety valve type receiver, and you know, you've got a third and very long. You got to be real careful with the football at this point too, because you got a high flying defense. It's been known to get very good pressure. So Eccles, when he throws the football here, and we anticipate he does with Fitzpatrick in the backfield, may only be able to go to about two progressions. On third and 14, looking for right, and right can't locate the football. It looks like it's incomplete. That's DeAndre Ferris in on the coverage. It's fourth and 14. Well, you're right about right at <laughs> time, Graham. He just does not look for the football, and that could have been a, a makeshift comeback type catch because the ball was thrown short. Bad series in for Maine, really bad series. Another punt coming up for Maine and David Gelb. He has been very active punting the football in his first two career games. Gets this one away. This is a pretty short punt reeled in by Cray in Maine territory at the 47. And here you feel the change in possession from that penalty and the change of field possession. Because ordinarily, if you advance the ball with at least one first down after starting at your own 20, even if you have to punt the football, you don't start on the negative end of the field or positive end of the field for Western, however you want to look at it. So now Western Kentucky with this high flying offense, it's been quiet here in the second quarter and for the latter stages of the first. Now all of a sudden start from their own 47. Yeah, all 21 points so far tonight have come in the first quarter for Western Kentucky. Two touchdowns in about 90 seconds to Blink start the eye. game. Eccles first and 10 from the main 47. Hill Toppers will start this one on the ground to Trigg. And the junior from Glasgow, Kentucky picks up one, maybe two. Now both teams have three timeouts. And Western Kentucky strategically wants to run the clock out here in the first half and score. That's perfect world thinking, but that's exactly how they're approaching this drive. So they're going to feel it out with a short run on first down, and now they're going to spread it out offensively. That's LaFrance back in the backfield. It's a give to LaFrance, just carving through traffic, falls forward inside the 40s, down at the 39. Garland LaFrance can be electrifying in his future career for the Hilltoppers. <laughs> and you won't see Sheffield miss many tackles, but LaFrance made Sheffield miss then, and that's the difference between third and six and third and short. Go back on the ground to LaFrance, this time Maine ready for it to force a fourth down. That was Connor Walsh in on the stop for the Black Bears. We called his name a good bit today. The senior from Milton, Massachusetts. Eccles is going to remain in the game on fourth down. And I wonder if this is not a spot where you're in four down territory here, because again, you do not want to give up the football if you're Western. You're playing from the front with an 18 or rather 14 point lead. So why not go for it on fourth? We got a whistle and a timeout taken. 
by Maine and their head coach, Joe Harris-Simiak, wants to go over things with just under two minutes left in the second quarter. West Kentucky leading 21 to seven. A big fourth and five coming up for the Hilltoppers when we return. Brother, we'll keep it here. So fourth and five coming up here for West Kentucky. So Bob, what are you thinking in this situation here? It looks like West Kentucky electing to go for it. Kind of a no man's land here, too long for a field goal. Rather take your chances to go for it. Go through the air, keep it on the ground. I think you you're going to throw the football, but you're going to have Lucky Jackson and Furby in your alignment somewhere. And then you're going to have the big guy Jernigan on the outside. You're going to give yourself three choices here offensively. I say you run Lucky to the first down marker. You run Jernigan on a deep route. Or you give it on a jet sweep kind of concept to get Furby to the outside. It's been so, very so we're about to see how smart I am here, right? <laughs> I was just about to say, it's been very effective tonight going with Lucky Jackson. He's got 98 total yards and two touchdowns. Can you go wrong with the name Lucky? I mean, really, at the end of the day, so. at the end of the day, can you, I mean, I think you're going to throw something right at the first down marker. I really don't throw, think you go deep. And you can see Jernigan on the far side or check that. They've got... Uh, they have Jernigan down below nearest us. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage near the numbers. On fourth and five, Eccles to his tailback. LaFrance, he's hit immediately by Mozai Nelson with a fantastic tackle to force a turnover on down. That's just flat out good defense because they did exactly what we talked about, Graham. They throw the ball right at the first down marker, but the tackle presents it from getting there and Give Mozai Nelson the credit, man. That was a nice tackle. About two yards shy of the first down. So they were throwing the ball to the marker to convert and unable to do so. And they did have Jernigan with about a step on the defender on the outside against Patterson. They chose not to do that. So you, know, you still got reasonably good field position. You should try and advance the ball, throw the ball relatively deep here and see if you can't improve that. Play action for Ferguson looking for his tight end and he puts it on Julian Dunn who rumbles his way inside the 30. Thrown perfectly by Ferguson to Dunn. Drell Green in on the coverage. And what more can I add? You used the word, Graham. That was a perfectly thrown ball. We love throwing the football to the tight end. We saw Belcher earlier. Now on the outside. Maine is able to throw the football. Now they're in business. Now they've changed the whole complexion of their play calling. They've changed their approach to how they're going to finish this half out. This is not part of it, however. Another procedure penalty on Maine. That was a gain of 32 yards, by the way. As this will push the Black Bears back five more yards. First down. Fourth penalty tonight against Maine for 20 yards. That time it was on the receiver, Devin Young. And you're right, those are just the type of penalties that will drive a coach crazy. Well, with no wind, if you need three, you still probably need 20 yards, but getting a 15, a five yard chunk out of that really hurts. Big time self-inflicted penalties. Play action again for Ferguson. This time he just unloads out of bounds. That time he got pressured by Jeremy Darwin, the sophomore from Nashville, Tennessee. That's a good play by Ferguson. The pressure was there. He never looked to his left, however. He was kind of zoned in on the right quarter of the field. I'm not saying he had somebody open on the left, but he was kind of fixated on where he was going to throw the football. And he did not take a sack. That is crucial. They're still playing with two timeouts. Ferguson looking for Wright, and Wright has a step on him and hauls it in for the touchdown. The first catch of the night for Micah Wright in Maine. An extra point away from making this a touchdown deficit. I'm telling you, I am very impressed with the way Ferguson throws the football. He's got a lot of touch on it, Graham. A lot of touch on it then, just throws it over the DB and right is right on the spot. And here's the guy that tore his ACL, set out all the last season, all conference performer in 2016. 
How about that? That's how you respond, and guess what? We got ourselves a great football game. It's a 32-yard touchdown pass. Ferguson to Micah Wright. Extra point by Kenny Doak. It's up. It's good. So with a minute 32 left in the first half, Western Kentucky holding on to a 21-14 lead. And what a response by the Black Bears. We'll see what Western Kentucky has up their sleeve. How big was that fourth down stop defensively? It's huge. It's a pretty darn good football game. This one's turned into a little worried about three minutes into it. Now all of a sudden, look at what we got. The positive, though, for Western Kentucky, Bob, they have three timeouts left, plenty of time for this high-powered offense. Yeah, I, I think in this case, this changes your strategy when you talk about the new rule in college football with the ball coming out to the 25. I think you now want to have an opportunity where you try and blend a return into your strategy and try and improve your field position. Look for the larger, taller, Jernigan type receivers to come into this next set for Western. Now they're still working with uh, with three timeouts. A mile by, you could just feel that momentum shift about seven, eight clock minutes ago. I'll tell you what, Maine's not gonna lay down for anybody. FBS, FCS, doesn't matter at this point. Coming off the huge win a week ago, beating their rival in top 10 New Hampshire and really just dominated that ball game, 35-7. And it took them, you know, although we said that, you know, Maine kind of took the game to New Hampshire last week, it took them a series or two to get settled in. And you concerned about that happening here early on, the way Western came out with that quick 21. Maine never veered off the course. Now they're in really good shape, but they got to defend here and the final minute 26. That was LaFrance on the return, stopped by Jordan Swan. So offensively here for West Kentucky in the second quarter, only 40 total yards. What have you seen in the second quarter? Well, I've seen defensive adjustments by Maine, and it has to do more with how they're basically defending the wide receivers. They're not getting a ton of pressure on Eccles, although they've had a sack of him recently, but they've been able to get better push up front with that front four and they've been defending better against the bigger wide receivers. Play action for Eccles all the time in the world. Now he's under pressure and Eccles is somehow able to get back to the line of scrimmage. That was Sterling Sheffield. Again, he's been everywhere defensively. Yeah, he's getting warmed up, Graham. Remember, he's kind of silent in the first quarter. And you know, kind of the jinx at least I have when I call ball games when I'm talking about players to watch early on. He's gotten warmed up. This play will be blown dead because Maine calls a timeout. Hilltoppers wanted to go tempo, and Maine wasn't set correctly or where they wanted to be on defense, so they call a timeout and they have one left. So we'll keep it here with 59 seconds left in the second quarter. And Bob, this this feels like a big drive for West Kentucky just to find momentum again on offense. Well, I'll turn it around. It's a big drive for Maine as well. And that's a crucial timeout by them because they had 10 players on the field. So those those changes and alignments that I talked about that Maine has been doing, they still are accomplishing them, but they we're going into that play with only 10 on the field, so that's crucial. Se second element is, I think just to, just to turn uh, Western Kentucky back here is another victory you take into the locker room with you, but you just gotta be so susceptible to the big play and the deep ball from Western Kentucky. Second and 10, swings it out to LaFrance. LaFrance with room as he attains the first down for the Hilltopper. He picks up about 13 yards. They got pushing and shoving going on away from the play. No flags on the play. It looks like Xavier Lane trying to pick up block up downfield. Gain of 13 yards. And West Kentucky wants to go tempo. Now we got a main player slow to get up, stopping the clock with 54 seconds. And yeah, the home crowd thinks this is uh, 
a rehearsed injury, shall I say, and I don't think that's the case. I'm trying to see exactly who it is. One of the things also for Maine defensively, uh, they've gone back with the, with nickel coverage. They bought a fifth defensive back. Remember I was talking about it in the first quarter or so where Patterson was just getting hammered. It seemed like he was the only man in, in the deep defense area in the secondary for uh, for Maine and made some adjustments to this point and they're playing with more personnel deep and especially in this situation now where they've got to avoid from the deep ball because still you know if you're going to settle for a field goal opportunity here you still need 30 35 plus yards if you're Western Kentucky to get in field goal range and so you're going to see that extra DB and it's going to be left up to Shepard or Sheffield rather in that group to be able to get that pressure in the three to five yard range of the football and four seconds out and four seconds into a mistake. That's what you're looking for in this case if you're main. And if you're able to get the football, you're just going to take a knee if you're main and we'll head on to the locker room because all of a sudden they've got a little bit, captured a little bit of this momentum. This is where I think Sheffield is so crucial to watch where he lines up defensively for Maine and he's going to come right at the stand up Thought he was going to get back into kind of a linebacker situation. He's going to fake the rush here. Let's see what he does. Eccles steps up in the pocket. Now just dumps it down to Furby as running back, and Furby moves forward for a gain of 11 for a first down. The clock stops with 43 seconds. So here's the deal with Sheffield right then because he was paramount in that play. You'll notice Sheffield was three to four yards off the line of scrimmage, is kind of shadowing Eccles. But when Eccles moved to the outside, Sheffield immediately went toward him to try and cut him off, and Furby just slipped right out of that area, and he was able to throw the football. So crucial to that play right then was Sheffield, and he just made a decision to go after Eccles like he has successfully so many times here in the first half, and Eccles burned him with the throw to Furby in that situation. Got another main player down on the field back to back plays first it was Mozai Nelson he was able to walk off the field on his own power can't quite make out who this is just yet but this is giving time for this West Kentucky offense to keep their timeouts and game plan here with 43 seconds left in the second quarter back to back injuries as you mentioned and you just kind of wonder who that benefits the most. And you look at the Western staff, I see exactly who that is. But if you'll notice, as happens so often in this situation, the Western offensive coaching staff was coming out near the numbers, waiting to see who was injured, who would be out of the game. And that determined their personnel groupings that they sent onto the field. That was Jeffrey Devon, by the way being helped off the field. Eccles gets hit, the ball's loose. The officials call this a fumble. Maine scoops it up and heading the other way, trying to take it all the way and doing so for the Black Bears. Scoop and score for Shaquille St. Lot. Right place, right time. And now the Black Bears are an extra point away from tying this at 21. Unreal turn of events. This is why you play the game. Have you heard that overridden cliche, Graham? This is why you play the game. Now the question is, are you going to look at this? And that's fair. That's totally fair. And totally necessary in this case. So Ken Ante again will have a replay review here for the second time tonight and both of our reviews have been impactful scoring plays. One was the 51 yard touchdown pass to Jefferson earlier. Eccles this time. This will be interesting to see how this one turns out. And again remember call on the field. Loose ball picked up for the touchdown by St. Lot. So they're going to continually show the replay. <laughs> On the Jumbotron here. If it stands, though, what has been the biggest difference in the second quarter for Maine? The pressure that their front, front three and front four has been able to get. And I cannot stress enough about there's a hole there easily that wasn't called. I cannot stress enough about the play of Sheffield and how he's finally gotten into it. Ooh, I don't know about that. 
That's def really close. Definitely got hit around his elbow, forearm area when he's releasing the football. But again, the call on the field, a scoop and a score. You know, you get that uh, term in baseball for two with this bounce. That was that way for uh, Maine, bounce right in her hands. Another long review here at Houghton Smith Stadium. Trying to sort this one out just to tell of different Western, quarters. Western is going to try and dictate the result, and they're going to send their offense back onto the field. And the same for Maine with their defense. But the decision has not been announced by the referee. This is called polling election numbers is what this <laughs> is called, right? I don't believe I've ever seen this in the replay age. Officials just trying to get this right. Lucky Jackson trying to fire up all the West Kentucky Hilltopper fans. And here's the call from the official Ken Ante. The arm was going forward prior to losing possession of the ball. Incomplete pass. To be second down at the 44. Please reset the game clock to 38 seconds. So Western Kentucky dodges a bullet, and they will put a few more seconds back on the clock in the process as well. 38 seconds now on the clock, and the Hilltoppers still have all three timeouts left. Again, pressure defensively by Maine. And this is going to push the decision-making importance on the part of Eccles. On second and 10, Eccles rips one down the near side. It's incomplete, looking for Xavier Lane, doing in a double coverage. Jeffrey Devon in on the coverage along with Jordan Swan. And kind of gotten lost in that early surge by Western Kentucky is really how ineffective Eccles has been in the last couple of series. Low ball, high ball in that case right now, and a big third down upcoming. And again, you got to figure they're in four down territory as well. They're still a long ways out from any field goal opportunity. Hilltoppers one for five tonight on third down. Eccles on the rollout, throws on the move over the head of Lucky Jackson. Stopping the clock with 26 seconds left, fourth and 10 decision time for Mike Sanford. So again, the defensive secondary for Maine, they're getting Patterson some help back out there. And then that time they had no problem with the safety in the middle of the field, shifting over to where Lucky Jackson was. Now the result was is that Eccles overthrew Jackson in that case. But nonetheless, they're paying a little bit more attention to Jackson, not necessarily trying to take him out of the game, but scheming a little bit more toward his way, and it's been effective for Maine. Another punt for Alex Ranella, his fourth. Micah Wright calls for a fair catch, brings it in around his own 13. So 20 seconds left in the first half. Maine has one timeout. And the Black Bears have scored on big plays tonight. Let's see if they want to be aggressive here or take a knee and go in to halftime down by a touchdown. I'm going to make this play call. You take a knee. You have a short run to the locker room. If you're main, you take a knee in this situation. What an entertaining first half. Just a, uh, You've got to play the game. you got to play right. every play in the game. And while that call went against you, if you're main, it was the correct call in the end. And that's where replay really has its pluses. But they're very much in this football game as we head to halftime. Ferguson will hand it off to Fitzpatrick. He's hit right away by the nickelback darted. And this should be the final play of the first half with five Get seconds one. left. Second and Maine nine. will work their way off the field. It was a back and forth, an entertaining first half that sees Western Kentucky leading Maine at the break, 21 to 14. We'll step aside and we'll be back with more from Houchin Smith Stadium in Bowling Green, Kentucky. 
from 1961 to 1964. Halftime in Bowling Green, West Kentucky leading Maine 21 to 14. The Century team being honored on the field at halftime tonight as West Kentucky is celebrating 100 years of football. Jack Harbaugh in the house after he won the national championship back in 2002. But Bob tonight, Touchdown lead for West Kentucky. Your biggest takeaway in the first half is what? A tale of two quarters in the first half itself. And once Maine stabilized what they were doing, got over being shell-shocked, got over the rain and the elements and everything working against them, they just kind of got together, put a couple of drives together, began to run the football better. And in the meantime, Western Kentucky, Eccles not playing as well as he played early on, not having the big success with the deep ball. All of those things kind of collided. That's where we are at 21-14. Touchdown lead for West Kentucky. We'll step aside. We'll be back with more halftime for Bowling Green. Hey, everyone. Maddie Morris here inside the COSA studio. Another weekend of college football is here, and as we anxiously await to see if our teams can pull off the dubs today, let's take a look at next week's slate. With Louisiana Tech and Rice on by, 12 schools will be in action next Saturday with a heavy dosage of games against Power 5 opponents, including four on the road against SEC teams. UTSA travels to Kansas State at 3 p.m. Central on Fox Sports Network, and our second conference showdown of the season takes place in Charlotte as the 49ers host Old Dominion at 5 p.m. Central on ESPN3. After some incredible performances opening weekend last weekend, let's take a look and see who won the first weekly football awards of the season as well as our other fall sports. Picking up right where he left off last season, North Texas junior quarterback Mason Fine is this week's Offensive Player of the Week. The 2017 Offensive Player of the Year award winner completed 40 of his 50 passes for 444 yards against SMU, both of which were career highs. Not only that, but the 444 yards is the fifth most in a single game in North Texas program history, while the 40 completions is tied for the third most in a single game in program history. Fine also threw for three touchdowns with zero interceptions. This week's Defensive Player of the Week honor goes to Louisiana Tech's James Jackson. The junior safety had a career night and accounted for half of the Bulldogs' turnovers against South Alabama, forcing two fumbles while also recovering another one. He also filled up the stat sheet with six tackles and half a sack, all of which were career highs. And Quez Watkins from Southern Miss is this week's Special Teams Player of the Week. The sophomore punt returner took a punt 81 yards to the house for a touchdown, making him the first Golden Eagle to score on a punt return since 2016. He totaled 103 yards on three punt returns and finished the night with 241 all-purpose yards in the win over Jackson State. In women's soccer, UTEP junior defender Lauren Crenshaw is this week's Offensive Player of the Week after scoring two goals over the weekend and registering a game-winning assist. Middle Tennessee senior defender Sydney Navarro is the Defensive Player of the Week after anchoring the Blue Raiders to a shutout weekend, while UAB senior goalie Kelsey Darty is the Goalkeeper of the Week after earning one clean sheet and posting 18 total saves in two games. Men's soccer sees a Kentucky sweep as junior forward J.J. Williams is the Offensive Player of the Week and sophomore defender Ame Mabika is the Defensive Player of the Week. Williams wins the honor after scoring the only goal of the match for either team, while Mabika helped lead the Wildcat back line in the 1-0 shutout over Columbia. In volleyball, UAB sophomore outside hitter Abby Carlo wins the Offensive Player of the Week honor after averaging 3.60 kills per set while racking up 54 total kills over the weekend. Rice's Grace Morgan is this week's Defensive Player of the Week after totaling 14 blocks in over 11 sets at the Owls home tournament in Houston, while Florida Atlantic's Yvonne Martinez is the Setter of the Week after averaging 11.44 assists in their home tournament over the weekend. And Charlotte Setter Nia Steele is this week's Freshman of the Week after dishing out 162 total assists for a 9.53 assist per set average. And make sure to tune into our Conference USA Facebook page every Monday at 3 p.m. Central for our live Player of the Week announcement presented by Top of the World. For Conference USA, I'm Maddie Morris.
Welcome back to halftime. 21 to 14 lead for West Kentucky. Just taking a look at some of these first half highlights. Starting off with a defense for West Kentucky, but Bob, it really seems like the biggest theme has been big plays tonight for both of these teams. As there you see the sack. And then here are some of the big plays that we alluded to. DeAndre Furby with the run and then First play of the game for the Hilltoppers. It's a touchdown toss to Lucky Jackson. Yeah, then they're rolling, right? It's 21 0. Looks like it's going to be a long night. Looks like Graham and Bob are going to have to pull their filler material in. And then all of a sudden, Maine gets back into it. They had a couple drives where they began to run the football that may not have been scoring drives. And then they had a couple things go their way. Uh, the, the, the touchdown pass, Ferguson. Jefferson began to run the ball well, become involved in the receiving game, and then all of a sudden you get to this point where you're like, okay, Maine also had a touchdown call back on a catch and on, on a uh, fumble that they recovered and returned right. for an apparent touchdown at the time. And so we had to wait on the result of that. It was correctly called a incomplete forward pass. But then Maine still defensively, after Western Kentucky getting a second chance, they were able to hold defensively as well. And that's where we are here at halftime, 21-14. This will be a very good 30 minutes upcoming. What do you think will be the biggest keys for both teams in the second half? Well, for Western Kentucky, they got to get back to what got them that 21-0 lead. Of course, one of them was a very fortunate defensive play. But Eccles has got to get more accurate. Graham, he kind of tailed off there, especially in the second quarter. Uh, got sacked a couple of times. Defensive adjustments by Maine was the difference. For Maine, I just got to continue to play defense as well as they've been playing because I think part of Eccles' inefficiencies has been forced by the defensive play and the adjustments that Maine meant. So obviously, like a basketball game, the first five minutes, but the first possession by each of these teams here in the second half, I think is important. 21 to 14 lead, only 60 yards of offense for West Kentucky in that second quarter. We had an eventful first half and we should be in store for a fantastic second half. We'll step aside, we'll be back with kickoff when we return, 21 14 lead for Western Kentucky. Back with more after this. Welcome back to Houchin Smith Stadium in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Graham Doty and Bob Belvin, happy to have you with us tonight. Taking a look at the first half stats, West Kentucky, 242 total yards of offense, but only 66 in that second quarter. 189 passing, 52 on the ground. Maine has 201 yards of total offense, 136 through the year, 65 rushing tonight. And the Black Bears will get the football to begin the third quarter. And we still have a lot of time left, Bob, but this seems like a huge drive for Maine to begin the third quarter. Well, it is, and I used the basketball, the overused basketball analogy, first five minutes kind of situation. But I really think that's what we've got here in terms of Maine. I, I think it's more incumbent upon Maine to possess the ball for a while, even run a little clock here early and put some points on the board and just put themselves within striking distance. And for the first time tonight, we get our look at the first fair catch rule in college football this season as Jordan Swan immediately signaled for fair catch. This is a rule change in Maine one of the football first and 10 from the 25. I like it. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion throughout college football and the NFL for that matter about a majority of the injuries occurring during kickoffs and punts, particularly the kickoffs when you just got young men running 60 yards full steam. And uh, You think kickoffs will be in the game much longer? Not in the next it, five years. It no. certainly seems like it's heading that way. Not in the next five years. First and 10 for Maine. On the ground of Jefferson, he's going backwards as he's being swarmed by several Hilltopper defenders. Ben Holt, one of the first ones there, along with Corey and Darden. First time we've called Ben Holt's name. He played very well at Wisconsin last week. A team captain. Stead Coast at West Kentucky. His brother, also a linebacker at West Kentucky, runs in the family from Ben Holt. Well, it does. And Holt, as you mentioned, I haven't been calling him a lot tonight, but if you're going to continue to run the football and with the misdirection 
and the success that Maine does. And you need that middle linebacker like Holt to just kind of anchor the middle. In this case, he's just kind of shadowing the wide receiver. And a bad throw. They try to go back to Belcher on third down and immediately Maine unsuccessful running the football on first. Unsuccessful with a quick out to Belcher. Here we go again. Very similar to what they looked at in the first half. Third and long. Just one for seven on third down in the first half. It's third and 12. And again, the go-to targets, especially Ernest Edwards has not touch the football tonight. Wright has a touchdown reception of 32 yards. You know, Graham, that's a good point because with all the misdirection and reverses that we saw last week, you'd think they would find a way to get Ernest the football. Here's a throw and a sliding catch is made by Jaquan Blair. And from the spot, this is good for a first down. That is a big conversion if it holds. And right now they're saying it's just shy of the line to gain. So it's fourth and about half a yard and West Kentucky very late getting out on the field for this punt return. And a unique formation here. Here comes Belcher is going to take the snap, the former quarterback. Here's a quick hitter to Blair and the Hilltoppers all over it. In on the stop, that was Gage Walker, not fooled at all. So Maine tried to go with a little bit of trickery there and it backfires. Well, the conventional wisdom says you don't try that at your end of the field. That's a big momentum shift. But credit the Western defensive team and the coaching staff. They saw the former quarterback Belcher. He's not the punter. So when he's in that formation, they immediately, they didn't switch personnel, but they were able to communicate onto the field that you need to look for something here. I think in that case, you just direct snap at a Belcher and let him run off the line. This is this could be the big momentum shift that Western needed to retain that. Gutsy call going against conventional wisdom for Bain. That's LaFrance in motion, play action for Eccles. He pump fakes and now fires, and it is incomplete. Looking for Xavier Lane. That's Manny Patterson in on the coverage. And give Patterson another pass breakup to add to his team leading last year. Couple last week gets one right here. Yeah, he had 17 a season ago. And if you'll recall, again, I've, I've talked about it time and time again, but Patterson was kind of out of an island in that first quarter and Eccles torched him. And since then, the game has kind of come back to the main defense, the main is the game has kind of come back to their secondary where they've made some better adjustments. Here's LaFrance. LaFrance trying to get the edge. He does a flag is though. LaFrance runs out of bounds. If the play stands, it results in a first down. The penalty marker down around the 28. Xavier Lane holds the block too long, Graham, and engages the defender. The wide receiver lane right there. You can see the hold on lane. Off, oftentimes a great indicator is when the flag hits you in the ankle. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened to that situation. But Lane had him engaged high. And for some reason, LaFrance didn't get to the edge as quick as he has been. Lane has to hold that block, commits the penalty. Just the third penalty tonight against Western Kentucky. So that wipes out the first down run by LaFrance. That's a big play too because that goes from a first down to second and nearly 20. It's officially second and 17 for Eccles. Going up top for his tight end, Dean. It's incomplete. That was Patterson again on the coverage. He's been everywhere. Has there been a player that's been picked on more tonight than Patterson? That time he might have got away with one. And he was beat. So maybe he's thinking, although the official did not make the call, I'll watch this on the Jumbotron because I'm very curious to look at it. Looks like he was beat deep and may have just given up on a play to try to commit the penalty. No, it was pretty good defense. Now that I look at it upon further review. Big third down here. There's Jackson in motion. Two touchdowns in the first quarter. 
Eccles loses the football and it's picked up by Deshaun Stevens and Stevens will scoop and score in Maine with a huge play here, an extra point away from tying the game at 21. And this one will count. Eccles gets in the end zone at exactly the same spot that the TD on the fumble of Eccles that turned out to be an incomplete four pass of a quarter of a go. He's in that same spot in the end zone. I'm telling you, this main defense, you talk about in-game adjustments. Graham, they were getting torched in the first quarter, and they have gotten the pressure turned up on Eccles, and Eccles hasn't made the best of decisions tonight. A huge turn of events. Extra point for the tie at 21. Kick it up. It's good. Tied for the first time tonight in the first ever meeting between Western Kentucky and Maine. 12 41 to play. West Kentucky looks to respond offensively when we return. All right, top 10. Turn your attention to the field. 12 41, third quarter, Maine and West Kentucky deadlocked at 21. Hilltoppers playing for the quick kick here after the scoop and the score by the Black Bears to tie it at 21. The third sack for Maine comes up large for the Black Bears to tie it at 21. You know, whether you're a fifth year senior or a freshman, pressure on you, the quarterback, defensively coming from a number of different angles is always problematic. On the return across the 15, and again the ball pops out. Still loose around the 17, and it looks like Western Kentucky does recover the football. Looks like Gage Walker with the recovery. And we got a main player down on the field. So Deshaw Stevens, it's officially ruled a 50 yard scoop and score in the third sack of the game for Maine. And this is a Western Kentucky offensive line. It was an issue a season ago. They allowed, they allowed 48 sacks, which was 129th in the FBS. Only allowed one last week to a very good Wisconsin defense. We touched on the offensive line. Everybody started a new position last week in Madison. Only two other teams in the country can say that, Fresno State and UTSA. But tonight, this O-line for the Hilltoppers has given up the three sacks. And that one, the ball popped out, 50-yard scoop and score for Stevens. So here comes the Hilltopper offense. Again, jogging out on the field. So, excuse me, Graham, they'll go with a two wide look here. And they got to be leery of throwing the football. They need to get back to running the football a little bit and trying to reduce some of that pressure. See how now they're going to bring the wides tight. Main response defensively. Handoff and not much there at all. Maybe a gain of two on the carry. And you know how coaches and commentators talk ad nauseum about controlling the line of scrimmage, how the not game is won there. Well, just think about what Maine has done defensively over the last quarter and a half, two quarters, where they've been able to control that line of scrimmage. It's meant all the difference. Play action, pressure again, Eccles. On the move, is able to connect with his tight end, Dean, for the first down, but a flag is back at the 21. There's a the flag on the play. Well, that's a nice catch by Dean because it was thrown by Eccles in the only place that he could catch it. And a costly mistake against West Kentucky erases that first down. So they call Fortenberry, they said 44, they meant 42. They call Fortenberry for the penalty and he's a tight end and they called him an eligible man downfield. He's a little, a bit confusing. What it is is a crucial penalty because it wipes out another first down. It's the fourth penalty tonight against the Hilltoppers. 
This makes it second and 19. Eccles going back through the air. Just out of the reach of Sloan, the vertical threat for the Hilltoppers. In on the coverage, that's Jordan Swan, the sophomore from Baltimore. Yeah, Swan gets up talking a little trash, but the fact of business is he was beat. And Eccles just threw that ball another yard difference. We commented on that earlier with Ferguson. You could really see Maine coming with four. They're coming from the edges and then uh, gapping in the middle. They're getting a lot of pressure. Yeah, Swan's beat there. Big third down here, coach. It's actually third and 14. West Kentucky just one for seven tonight. Pressure again as Eccles hits as he throws, completes it to Xavier and Lane, escorted out of bounds immediately, well shy of the first down. Manny Patterson with the stop. Deshaun Stevens up the middle that time and called him a couple of times tonight. He had the team leading eight tackles last week against New Hampshire. So he's getting it up the middle. And that's a that's a 10 yard gain. But when you're working third and 15, that still doesn't get it. And Maine will get presumably very good starting field position. Fifth punt of the game for Anella. Wright watches it bounce, and now we'll scoop it up and run out of bounds around the 34. So just under 11 minutes to play in the third quarter. West Kentucky and Maine tied at 21. We got a timeout called on the field as we'll take a break with them. Maine will try to take the lead for the first time when we return to Houchin Smith Stadium in Bowling Green, Kentucky. First and 10 for Maine from their own 35. Ferguson gets ready to go back to work. He's 6 of 16 tonight. 147, two touchdowns and an interception. Gets clobbered as he releases the football, and it's broken up at the last second by Darden. Darden out of nowhere, the junior from Russellville, Kentucky, with an excellent coverage on Micah Wright, the big play threat for the Black Bears. Broken up by number 15. Wright almost Johnson. caught that football Second while down. lying on his back. And you're right, Ferguson got it perfectly clean. And Wright's going to be on his back and have a chance. Good defense then. Tell you what, we're so high up here, I could see Russellville, Kentucky from here. <laughs> <laughs> After all, we're on the hill, right? It's not that far away from Bowling Green. Handoff to Fitzpatrick and not a lot of room at all. Well snipped out by Western Kentucky. D'Angelo Malone, we've called his name a lot tonight. He was able to force Fitzpatrick out of bounds. Yeah, so for whom the bell tolls as they ring the bell here on third down. One for eight tonight on third down is Maine. Both teams have had a possession here in the second half and done nothing with it. Ferguson being pressured by Saner gets rid of it. Incomplete at the feet of his running back, Joe Fitzpatrick. Holtz on the coverage. So we talked about Maine's pressure. That time Western got the pressure they needed. They stunned it in the inside and forced Ferguson out. And all he could do was throw the ball at the feet of Fitzpatrick. And Holt the linebacker there as well, but uh, not a good sequence. Times two in this half for Maine offensively. I think we get Belcher in late. But I don't think Belcher is going to fake it here like he did yeah. last time. <laughs> Remember last time Maine went for the fake punt on fourth and half a yard and did not convert it. This is a pretty good punt as Cray brings it in at his own 23. So this is a Western Kentucky offense just got off to a white hot start scoring on the first play of the game. And, and since then, they just had problems maintaining, maintaining the football. A lot of turnovers against the Hilltoppers tonight. We got a timeout called on the field with 10.05 to play in the third quarter. First and 10 for Western Kentucky when we return after. 
Tied at 21 at the 10.05 mark in the third quarter. First and 10 for this Western Kentucky offense. Drew Eccles tonight, 12 for 23, 197 through the air, two touchdown passes, both in the first quarter. That's Jernigan in motion. Eccles tries to set up a screen to Sloan, and Sloan wiggles his way for a short pickup. Like the play, you bring Jernigan across the formation, and then he's going to basically create a pick play on that side of the field. Probably didn't think you would say this coming in, but the speed of the main defense at that time, able to get out on the edge uh, and keep it to no gain. Another main defensive player out, Jeffrey DeVaughn, the third Black Bear defender out tonight. Another handoff, and the Hilltoppers might have lost a yard on this play as Charles Mitchell is on the stop. Mitchell was everywhere against New Hampshire last week. He had two and a half sacks. Big on the tackle for losses was Mitchell, and you can add another one to that category here because they'll mark this minus one. So am I beginning to sound like a broken record, or is this a big third down here? <laughs> it's third and 11. On their own 21. Eccles trying yeah, to get out yeah. of trouble, and Sheffield wraps him up and brings him down back at the 12. Yeah, and that Stevens on the twist. Did you see the play? Sheffield and Stevens with a little twist right in the middle, and Stevens was low, Sheffield was high, and Drew Eccles' problems continue with that front four of Maine. They have not on the offensive line, made the adjustments they needed. Eccles has made a few bad decisions along the way, but man, oh man, has Maine just improved dramatically with their adjustments on defense. Fair catch called by Wrights at his own 47. Big Wright. news offensively, injury-wise for Maine. One of their top playmakers, Ernest Edwards, is out for the rest of this ball game. He had didn't even really touch the football tonight, especially offensively touching on special teams, but that's a huge loss for Maine the rest of this game. If you want to see an animated coach, take a look at Corey Heatherton with the defensive unit for Maine as they've head to the bench. He is one excited coach. Look at this. Take a look at him, Graham. He has got them fired up and with good cause. They're playing outstanding football half since about the eight minute mark of the first quarter. And his main team right in the thick of things, playing on the road. Here's Jefferson. Jefferson with a nice spin move before finally being Jefferson tackled the by the cornerback, DeAndre Ferris. Gain of four. If you're going to continue to run the football like that, and your passing game is diminished somewhat with Edwards out, having just gotten word of that, then you're going to need that kind of effort from, from Jefferson there to kind of spin and churn. That's nice yardage on first down, fall immediately at midfield. Second and six. Tough stretch coming up here for Maine. The next three are on the road, a bye week after this one. Ferguson dumps it down to Devin Young, and he's wrapped up by Ben Holtz, the sophomore Bowling Green native, has been everywhere defensively tonight for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, Holtz slides over, and that's something he's not known for, being good against the pass. But in that case, they just try to run a little swing pass to the outside, and when your Mike linebacker gets that angle of pursuit, and you're throwing the ball to the short side of the field, credit Holtz. And another big third down upcoming. That may be a theme into the fourth quarter as well. Who does Ferguson go to with Ernest Edwards out? Dials one up for Devin Young and overshoots him. Incomplete. Fourth and eight on the way for Maine. He had a chance with Young down the sideline. Nice coverage, just green, as you mentioned, on the outside. And Another punt up coming here for Maine, and hard to believe after the start that we've kind of settled into a field position type of game. What do you attribute that to? 
I, I think the adjustments both teams have made defensively, and I've bragged a lot about Maines and with good cause, but Western Kentucky as well. But some of that has to do with their defensive success here with kind of the play calling, especially some of the play calling on first down by Maine. This ball skips inside the 15, inside the 10, a beautiful punt by David Gell, pins Western Kentucky deep in their own territory. And they will officially mark it down at the six with 6.39 to play in the third quarter. Western Kentucky and Maine tied at 21. And again, this Western Kentucky offense is trying to figure out this main defense, which is known as the black hole defense. And other than that first quarter, they've been very sharp tonight for Maine. Yeah. I think it's time to, I would not be surprised if Western doesn't try to air the football out here and throw the deep ball, even in this very poor starting field position they're going to have. Uh, I just think they just gotta look for something to shake them loose. That was one of the keys for Mike Sanford. Offensively, you have to execute the passing plays. Really have not done that as well as the Hilltoppers would want to. Try to find Jernigan. It's over his head, incomplete. Second and 10 coming up. And I don't like that play call at all because there was only one player that Eccles was going to throw the football to in that sequence, and that was Jernigan. He did not even survey the field. They were going to throw a... a about a 15 yard and out there for Jernigan, led him outsize the DB. Very unsuccessful. I, I, I think they may continue to throw the football throughout this possession. They've got to try and recapture a little bit of that magic with a big play. Two tight ends on the field here. Pressure in the end zone. Eccles avoids it and is able to connect with Jernigan, and from the spot, he's just short of the first down. When you take a look at that play, when they move Twigs, Trig rather, to the short side of the boundary, look at how far Eccles had to make a throw. He had to throw the ball nearly 35 yards to gain seven. I still don't understand that play calling in that situation when you can run Jernigan on a little waggle in the middle of the field or even have him go with the deep ball again on the longer side of the field. Third and two, West Kentucky on the ground, and this He's will short. depend on the spots. He's short. The line judge is going to come to the 15. The yard to gain is the 16. And the referee already has his fist in the air. That was Deshaun Stevens, one of the first ones in on the stop. It's fourth and one, offense on the field. West Kentucky on their own 15. It's a handoff. Maine all over it. Officials come charging in, trying to figure out where they want to spot it. This may appear to be a turnover on down as Sterling Sheffield, again, one of the first ones there. And Maine comes up with a huge stop on fourth down. Wow. So, so we saw Maine roll the dice early in the third quarter. Western Kentucky returns the favor, and there's no question about it. The line judge in two successive plays ran immediately up the 15-yard line, Graham, and told him to spot the ball right there when the yard the game was a 16. This may be hard to believe, but this is the first time that either team has been in the red zone tonight. Yeah. We talked about that at halftime between ourselves and never really bought that out on the broadcast, but it was all about big plays in the first half. Now it's settled into a defensive battle, and I kind of like Maine's defense right now, and now they need to, I, I, I wholeheartedly think right here, you must score six if this, you're Maine. This was an area where the Black Bears were very effective last week, and they go to Micah Wright for the touchdown. A 15-yard touchdown pass, Ferguson to Wright, and for the first time tonight, Maine takes the lead. Boy, this team doesn't quit, and there's a lot of football to be played. There's 20 more minutes of football to be played. Love the pass call, love the play. Love the execution. And how often do you see when you make a big defensive play, you kind of go for the home run ball? The only difference in that situation was they had a short field to work with. Kenny Doak on for the extra points. 
And the sophomore right down the middle. Maine was behind 21 to zero at one point. Now 28 unanswered and the Black Bears take the lead for the first time tonight with 516 left in the third quarter. And we probably got to take a commercial break, but I would not be surprised if you don't see an offensive quarterback change for Western Kentucky coming up. Be real curious to see how long they're going to stay with Drew Eccles. They need a jolt of some sort. Looks like we'll keep it here with 516 left to play in this third quarter. And as you just alluded to, definitely something to keep an eye on. Look at the look at the body language of the two sidelines. Now, granted, we have a great viewpoint, right? But just take a look at the body language of the two sidelines. This is a main team fired up. They defeated the number seven team in the FCS, New Hampshire, their rival, to begin their season. Go on the road, a tough stretch coming up. You're at West Kentucky, at Central Michigan, at Yale, who won the Ivy League a season ago. The main has been very tough and physical tonight. They only have four home games this season. Yeah, you didn't think about that going into it. You figure everybody gets five or six, right? They get four. That's big. When you're at FCS school, that's big. You have to go to the payday games, this being one of them, and you have to try and work that schedule as best you can. Plus, they've got to go to William and Mary and Richmond. LaFrance on the return. LaFrance across the 30, stopped at the 31. LaFrance on the return. That time brought down by Mosai Nelson. He's had a productive night tonight for Maine defensively and on special teams. So let's see what this Hilltopper offense comes up with here with 5-10 to play in the third quarter. And they have not been able to muster anything offensively really since that first quarter. No, they haven't. And we do have an injury on the field. I'm trying to see if Eccles is in the huddle. And you know, granted, I might be a bit premature, but if you're Mike Sanford, you're thinking, what have I got to do to get this offense going? I've been very impressed with LaFrance tonight. I mean, there's a reason why, although he was in the opening kicks earlier, <laughs> there's a reason why you keep in the special teams. You're looking, you're looking for that jolt. You're looking for something that he can give you. And he almost broke one right there in that, in that case. Player down for Maine is Adrian Otero, and that is definitely something to keep an eye on because he got the start tonight at linebacker due to the fact that Tagui Lowe and Jerron Grayer are unavailable. So something on watch there. The injury bug has certainly impacted Maine last week and tonight. Yeah, there have been a lot of injuries to Maine players tonight. So first and 10 for West Kentucky. Now look at this formation. Nobody in the backfield. There's LaFrance in motion. The fake to LaFrance. Here's Jernigan and Jernigan works his way forward for a short pickup. Stopped by Sterling Sheffield. Who else, right? So when I talked about the speed, now keep in mind Sheffield's on the D line. He comes back out to the edge and tracks Jernigan down. Al Western's trying to go with some tempo. Eccles connects to Jernigan, comes down with it. Knocked out of bounds immediately by Manny Patterson. This will bring up third and short. Third and about three. So let's talk extraneous matters. Western Kentucky's struggling. The wind is picked up. We know there's some impending bad weather along the way. Needs to be a little bit of an urgency in this drive right here for Western Kentucky because those things matter. Third and three, Hilltoppers tonight just one for 10. Eccles to the sideline, diving catch made by Jackson right at the first down marker and they will move the sticks. Darius Hart's in on the coverage and a much needed first down for the Hilltoppers. Corey Heatherman tried to sell that to the line judge that it wasn't where it was. The defensive coordinator for Maine. That gets a big cheer from this Western. That's their initial first down, I believe, here in the second half. Eccles with a clean pocket. Now he's being pressured and will just unload out of bounds. Best protection Eccles has gotten tonight was on that play right then. So that speaks to the coverage 
issues in my mind that Maine has corrected since they were burned so badly in the first quarter because Eccles, for what I can recall, is the first time tonight had all night to throw the football and still could not find an open receiver. And you just touched on it. That was the first down of the third quarter for West Kentucky just moments ago. Second and 10. Here's LaFrance trying to get him the football in space. And LaFrance down at the 45. So Garland LaFrance touched it five times against Wisconsin a week ago. And he's been a focal point in the offense tonight for Western Kentucky. Yeah, I would say he's kind of emerged tonight. You know, we were anticipating to see him coming in, but he's been their most productive player here in the last two quarters alone, Graham. I mean, he's been able to run that jet sweep with some consistency. And that time, I think he made a smart move by cutting back into the field. Here comes broken record again. Another big third down. It's third and six. DeAndre Furby in the backfield. He's the third down back. Eccles being pressured. And down he goes again. Sheffield, one of the first ones there, along with Hayward. And Sheffield needs to come back to his side of the field. He went and had a few words with the Western bench. Just let your play dictate what you are, son. Don't go over there and start getting the Western group all riled up. Man, he has been dynamite tonight. We knew it coming in. He and Stevens have just been extraordinarily successful up the middle and forcing Eccles to be uncomfortable. So fifth sack of the night for Maine. Right again, calls for a fair catch. It takes a Maine roll where it's down at the Maine 34. So with 2.39 left to play in the third quarter, Maine up by a touchdown, and the Black Bears have all the momentum. Well, I, and I'm curious to see what you do with that, right, Graham? What is your play calling like now that you have the lead on the road against an FBS opponent with impending weather coming in? I'm trying to – we had to ask uh, the folks here to get our directions, and then Graham answered that by just pulling his phone out. <laughs> But we know we know there's impending bad weather. We began the game with bad weather, but nothing like we've seen within the region. So it's very important to consider that in your overall plan. But I'm very curious to see what the play calling looks like here when you have the lead and your main. They will start it off on a run to Jefferson. Two flags yeah, down yeah, back yeah. around the line of scrimmage yeah, more than likely yeah. signaled a holding. That yeah. was Masai White on the stop. Yeah, negative 15 right there. That's not how you want to start. It's the fifth penalty tonight for Maine. I think that one's going to be on. Is it going to be on Garcia? I'll check that on the outside. Could be on Robinson. So here we go. Now they're playing behind the sticks again. I know might be analyzing it too much, but what do you do here is so crucial. And you probably want to run some clock if you're main too. Your defense has been pretty solid. You're trying to work on a lead here. Jefferson trying to turn the corner, crosses the 30 before he stopped by Antoine Kincaid, the sophomore from Valdosta, Georgia. Had five tackles last week at Wisconsin. Boy, Jaquan Blair had every opportunity to make a block in the back to try and free Jefferson up. And you got to give him credit on the edge because he just didn't go there, as we say these days. And that was important because that would have set him back another 15 because where he was positionally lended itself to committing that penalty. And he just kind of held back just long enough. Here's Joe Fitzpatrick. He's chopped off his feet. Well, the pile still moving. He never went down. Fights his way to the 35. Kincaid again on the stop. Three plus yards because the official, or rather the whistle, did not blow. Well, here we are. For whom the bell tolls here at Western. And they're going to ring it again when the opponent's on third down. This has been an issue tonight for Maine. Just one for 10 on third down. Black Bears have third and nine from their own 35. Ferguson 
Rolling out to the right. Being pursued from behind. Now he will try to tuck it and run as he's tripped up from behind around the 41. D'Angelo Malone again with a fantastic stop defensively for the Hilltoppers. And you got those DBs coming from the other side of the field and chasing that quarterback down. So there's a stop the West Kentucky defense needed. Now they just have to capitalize on this offensively. Seventh punt of the night coming up for David Gelb. He's averaging 38 yards a punt this evening. Roger Cray, the return man. It's a high snap. A flag is thrown, and Cray doesn't call for a fair catch, and he pays the price at the 30. It looks like Sheffield playing special teams as well in on the stop. For their, yeah, Sterling Sheffield with the stop. The penalty markers down at the 34 of Maine. There's still no announcement. I, I got to admit, I was going back down to the punt return. Hold on. Offense number six. Ten yard penalty. They tacked off to the end of the kick. First down. So that's a crucial penalty in that Western will start first and 10 from their own 40. 25 seconds left to play in this third quarter. All 21 points tonight in the first quarter for West Kentucky. Scored on the first play of the game, got a pick six. Moments later, two touchdowns in about 90 seconds for the Hilltoppers. And ever since then, this main defense has been stout. And look where Jernigan is at the numbers. Now they're gonna rotate out the wide receiver for Western, top of your screen. They're going to rotate out now and pick him up. Man, there's no help in the back half of the secondary. Something to watch for sure. Play action. Eccles steps up in the pocket, fires incomplete, not on the same page with Lucky Jackson. Eric Robertson almost had himself an interception if he comes up with that one. If he just looks up. In that case, and that's on Eccles. Eccles did a good job. That, that pocket again collapsed behind him. He stepped forward and away from the problem at the moment and just made a horrible throw. And Sheffield's at the bottom. He's at about the right end. He's going to come off the edge. I have to watch him. Hand off to LaFrance, and LaFrance can't quite get the edge. Runs out of bounds at the 44, chased out by Manny Patterson. And I mentioned Sheffield in that case because they ran right at him. I don't believe they changed the call at the line of scrimmage. And I'm not even going to mention how crucial this third down is because I might sound repetitive, but this is the big one too. See if West Kentucky wants to get a playoff. It appears they are content to go to the fourth and final frame. Only three yards of total offense in the third quarter for West Kentucky. Wow. Big play coming up for the Hilltoppers when we return. Third and seven, quarter number four, due up next from Bowling Green. Third and seven for Western Kentucky to begin this fourth quarter from their own 43. Third downs have been an adventure tonight for both teams. The Hilltoppers just two for 12 tonight. Maine is showing blitz. That's Jackson in motion. Eccles on the move. Hit as he throws, incomplete, fourth down. Sheffield again with the hit on Eccles. So you're right, Graham, but they only got the pressure with three. They showed blitz. This time, not a four-man front, a three-man front. They get pressure, and guess who's on the edge? And you talk about scouting. They move Sheffield to that end. He flows out with Eccles. The defensive staff of Maine had that choreographed perfectly, and they're going to get the football back. Fair catch called by Micah Wright at his own 20. 14-48, fourth quarter. So this is the stat of the game so far. In that first quarter, 
Western Kentucky scored three touchdowns and had 175 total yards of offense. Since then, zero points and only 70 total yards. And only four yards in total offense separate these two teams. It's unbelievable. The main defense after they suffocated New Hampshire a week ago got off to a slow start tonight, but once they found their groove, they've been they've been tough. 80 rush yards for Maine. So what? Well, it's been pretty crucial in this one. It's not a staggering number that jumps out at you. Western Kentucky's rushed for 30 yards in this game. Here's Fitzpatrick, powers his way up to the 27. Tackled by Jarrell Green, honorable mention Conference USA a season ago where he had 74 tackles and two interceptions. And both teams have been absolutely miserable on third down. One of 11 and two of 12 respectively, the two of 12 belonging to the Hilltoppers. It's all about what you get done on first down, I think, for the duration of this game. Fitzpatrick leaps at the line of scrimmage and still leans in for a gain of two to make it third and short. You know, one of the things with Maine, they've gotten away from that misdirection that they were doing early in the game. While it wasn't all that successful, to come back to a little bit of that, maybe a jet sweep to Jefferson here, get Ramon back in it. You just alluded to third down. Maine tonight just one for 11. Play action, Ferguson wide open. He's got his tight end, Drew Belcher. Belcher rumbles his way up to the 42 before he's stopped by Darden. Kind of how the game started for Maine, right? You go to Mr. Reliable Belcher, the former quarterback. Don't let him go in a fake punt situation again because that didn't work out all that well. But just enough misdirection, just enough of a nuance in it, Graham, to be able to to the right, um, shift the formation to the left, rather, and throw to the right. Just bring Belcher back around the formation. That's a big conversion on third down. Plus, it runs you some clock, too. That was a pickup of 13 yards. Belcher off the field after that reception. Here's Jefferson who wiggles his way for a gain of two yards. Stopped by Evan Sainer, the senior was very good a season ago, got hurt middle of October. At that time period, West Kentucky was the number one rush defense in Conference USA, and he really impacted their defense when he went down a season ago. It, it, it did, and at times tonight, uh, he's been a clog in the middle and really causing Maine some problems. But when they do the misdirection, instead of just trying to go face up, when they go face up with you, then being Maine offensively, that's where Saner really shines. Play action again, pump fake for Ferguson. Now he gets it and flings it out of bounds. D'Angelo Malone again was able to get to the quarterback. And Malone did not give up on the fake that Ferguson gave him. He continued his pursuit along the way. By the way, did I mention it's third down again? <laughs> it's been the storyline tonight for both of these teams. Third down stops defensively. Third and eight. Black Bears at their own 43. No Ernest Edwards. Micah Wright has been the go-to target tonight for Ferguson. Ferguson this time in traffic over the middle, broken up, incomplete. That was a defensive end, D'Angelo Malone in on the coverage along with Masai White. And Malone doing his uh, Sheffield impersonation then. And that ball bounced around a bit in the secondary until it fell harmlessly to the turf. If you're a fan of punts, this is the game for you. If you're a fan Both teams of, have punted it eight times tonight. If you're a fan of defense, this second half right. has been exactly what you're looking for. But as you saw with the main touchdown, all it takes is one busted coverage or one spectacular play in the case of Wright to change the course of the game. Fair catch signaled by Cray at his own 15. Well, who's not a fan of that punt with the hang time then? Fair catch made. 
That was one of the keys tonight for the coaching staff for Maine and their head coach, Jer uh, Joe Harris-Simiak said, we have to be better punting the football. And tonight they've done a much better job of that for the freshman, David Gelb. First and 10 for Western Kentucky when we return. Maine with a 28-21 lead back after this from Bowling Green. First play of the fourth quarter is a shovel play in traffic for the Hilltoppers. Dangerous pass there from Eccles, but it results in a gain of six. Yeah, we got another main player down. That's, that's Connor Walsh to D Lyman. So how how deep theoretically, Graham, are you in, in your bag of plays if you try to shovel pass that we haven't seen in a long time here on the hill? Obviously, we didn't see it last week against Wisconsin. At least I think I watched the whole game. I'm like, you know, that's a little bit of a wrinkle that is so safe and so, I think, you know, kind of needed at this point in time in the game. So, you know, Western, you, know, you, you want to stop short of saying they're pulling out all the stops, but a, a wrinkle here or there this late in the game, I like it. That was Mike Wandine, the tight end with his fourth catch of the game. He had 11 a season ago. He had one last week, and the player slow for Maine getting off the field is Connor Walsh, and this is a Maine defense. They have three guys out defensively. They, they can't got, afford to lose any more. There's been a lot of injury timeouts tonight for Maine as well. So second and four on the first play of the fourth quarter, West Kentucky with more yards than they had the entire third quarter. That's a cramp for Walsh too. Eccles being pressured and he just gets clobbered in the backfield by the linebacker to Sean Stevens. That's sack number six tonight for Maine. Folks, I'm telling you, if you don't like Stevens in Sheffield, and if they're not two of the best in FCS at the D-line position, or in Sheffield's case, kind of a hybrid D-lineman, you're nuts. Those two guys are outstanding college football players. Third and 11. Hilltoppers back at their own 15 after that loss of seven. Eccles this time with a clean pocket, finds his tight end, Dean, and Dean spins forward to about the 19. He was tackled by Darius Hartz. Fourth down, another punt coming up for the Hilltoppers. And look at the field position situation too. And they're gonna have to punt from inside of their own five, about between their five and 10. Again, the wind has kind of picked up and now it's kind of faded a little bit. It's in and out at one end of the stadium. The open in this stadium, it appears to be a little bit more of a force win, but look at this field position Maine is going to get here. Fair call by Wright at his own 48. That's the ninth punt of the game for West Kentucky. 10.25 to play in the fourth quarter. Maine up by a touchdown and a timeout called on the field, so we'll Take one with them with the 10-25 to play. Main 28, West Kentucky 21. We'll be back after this. First and 10 for Maine from their own 46, up by a touchdown. 10-25 to play in this fourth quarter. Maine is 2-0 all time against Conference USA schools with both wins coming against Florida International. And they begin the drive with a handoff to Fitzpatrick. And the junior rumbles his way for a gain of six before being tackled by Ben Holtz. Trying to find a leading rusher, Jefferson. Does not appear to be on the field right now for Maine. And that's an interesting development. That's that's nice by Fitzpatrick. We've seen a couple of those in sequences, but guess what? They haven't been able to convert it in second and third down after a good run on first down by Fitzpatrick. Another handoff to Fitzpatrick. This time he stonewalled and after a short down. gain to bring up third and shorts. Ben Holtz again on the stop. 
Ben Holt and his brother Nick Holt are the second set of brothers to be named captains at Western Kentucky, joining Elmer and Lee Murray, who both played for the Hilltoppers back in the 1960s. And you talk about players warming up. It sounds like a funny analogy to use in football, but Holt has gotten better as this game has gone on. He's been a beast defensively as well. It's third and two. Fitzpatrick in the backfield. It's the third handoff in a row and a big hole up the middle for Fitzpatrick before he spun down at the 24. Stopped by the safety, Drell Green. So see, when they checked off at the line, they went, they were gonna throw the football. They were gonna throw the football to right in the short boundary right in front of us. When they checked off, that created that running play then for Fitzpatrick. Green defensively shifted from the side of the field where Micah Wright was to the opposite side of the field. Green ends up making the touchdown saving tackle on Fitzpatrick. It's a gain of 22, tied for the longest run of the night for Maine. The fourth handoff in a row to Fitzpatrick. This one results in a gain of one. Ben Holtz again on the stop for the Hilltoppers. Hold tonight up to seven tackles. Ties him with Jawan Jones for a team high. We need to check the field goal range here. Now they're going to make the. Now they're going to make a uh, a change is main, and they got 12 on the field now. I'm going to get that corrected. They're in no hurry to run a play. They've got 10 more seconds to go. They're going to really shorten this game. Boy, a field goal here. 10 point advantage looks pretty stout if you can get there. Fitzpatrick this time turns the corner. A physical run for Fitzpatrick as Maine is now in the red zone. Devin Key with the stop. Misdirection upcoming here. There's going to be something that's going to be designed to keep Western off kilter. And there's the official's timeout. There's an injury on the far side of the field. Uh, one of the key things for Fitzpatrick, I know it's really early to think about this, Graham, but Fitzpatrick probably needed to stay in bounds in that situation. Player slow to get up for West Kentucky. It was Key who made the tackle. And the clock, as you alluded to, it is stopped with 748, and, and the clock, especially if Maine comes away with points here, the clock is a factor for West Kentucky. It is moving. And this drive has been a steady diet of Joe Fitzpatrick. Five runs in a row. Right and Cray at the bottom of your screen. Watch that. Ferguson looking for Blair. It's incomplete. And this will bring up third and six. DeAndre Ferris in on the coverage. Brother, it's actually fourth down for Maine here. And here comes the field goal unit. Field goal kicker, sophomore Kenny Doak. Three for five this season with a long of 35. This is a 37 yard field goal attempt to make it a two score lead for Maine. Appears to have the wind at his back ever so slightly. Snap is down, kick is up, has plenty of leg and it's good. And a 10 point lead for Maine, 31-21 with seven minutes and 11 seconds left in the game. So Maine has scored 31 unanswered points since the first quarter. So with the timeout call on the field and made up by 10, we'll take a timeout as well. West Kentucky tries to respond offensively when we return to Bowling Green. A 10 point lead for Maine. Black Bears trying to pick up their third win ever against an FBS school. They beat Mississippi State in Startful back in 2004. They won nine to seven. Then they beat UMass back in 2013. They won by 10 that night, 24 to 14. Kickoff brought in by LaFrance, who will take a knee first and 10 coming up for West Kentucky from their own 25. So you and I haven't had the pleasure of working together a lot, but I can tell you something right now. I am a big guy about the kicking game. I think it is crucial. 
a Tennessee guy, so that's one of General Nealon's game maxims, right? That kick right there was outstanding. It was in the corner, only three or four yards deep, unreturnable. And with the new rules with the kickoff returns, just those little nuances in special teams, plus your guy comes in and hits a crucial field goal just moments ago to make the lead 10, make it a two possession game. Those little nuances in the kicking game are kind of yeah. lost as you, you know, you get wrapped up in all the other stuff in the game. It's crucial, crucial. Drew Eccles goes back to work. Wide open, he's got LaFrance and a lot of room for LaFrance and he's gone. 75 yards for LaFrance. And that's what Western Kentucky needs. Still tons of time left in this ball game. So I had talked in a timeout. I thought it might be Jernigan they would need to get the ball to. But I like the way LaFrance has played tonight. Easy to say that after he scores the big touchdown. Just takes one play. When you live on the edge with a back and forth defensive game, hats off to Western Kentucky right then. And now all of a sudden Eccles has energy. Now all of a sudden the main defense is tired. Lots of elements go into one single play. Extra point, it's up, it's good. Maine holding on to a three-point lead. Seven minutes left in the game. Maine 31, Western Kentucky 28. A quick strike by the Western Kentucky offense. Their first point since the first quarter. Just what they needed. We'll keep it here. Still tons of time left in this contest. And another big factor, West Kentucky along with Maine, they each have three timeouts remaining. Last time Maine had the football, five runs in a row to Joe Fitzpatrick. It'll be interesting to see how the Black Bears want to start this drive. I don't think it's any different. Schematically, strategically, I really don't. If you're able to run the football, continue to do so. I still think a little mixture of that short passing game, trying to find Belcher underneath. And then we need to see a reemergence if you're main of Jefferson to get back in the football game. And it may have just been his rotation to be out last time. We talked about that during the break as well. But I was very surprised he was not in that offensive series that resulted in the field goal just moments ago by Maine. But <laughs> that seems like forever, right? <laughs> Another fair catch signal by Wright. Second time we've seen that tonight. Maine using the new kickoff rules to their advantage. First and 10 coming up from their own 25. So last time Maine had the football, five runs in a row, one pass. It was incomplete, settled for the field goal, up by three. Chris Ferguson tonight, just nine of 25, but he does have three touchdown passes. So if you want to talk about the value of getting the ball out fast, if you're Western Kentucky, look at this stat. Tonight, Maine has sacked Western Kentucky for negative 138 yards. Can that wow. be correct? I'll have to look. Yes. <laughs> Better hand off to Incredible. Fitzpatrick. Tackled by Darden. That really is remarkable. So in that case, getting the ball out quick like Western just did and getting to your speed on the outside. Am I reading that stat right? That's I think incredible. Six for 42, I believe. Six sacks, 42 adjusted, yards. It's the adjusted for the rushing. So that plays into your rushing toll. My apologies. Second and six, another handoff to Fitzpatrick, who somersaults his way to the 34. A yard shy of the line to gain. That was Kyle Bailey, the sophomore from Carrollton, Georgia, with a hit. That's the adjusted number taking the sacks out of it. Which I thought is always unfair against the uh, quarterback, right? <laughs> Huge play here. Third and one, Maine tonight, three for 15 on third down. West Kentucky crowds the line of scrimmage. Fitzpatrick lowers his head, picks up the first down for Maine. So what that does, Graham, that buys you about two more clock minutes when you were able to convert. 
prior to the last two drives, Ramon Jefferson was the leading rusher. We haven't really seen him a lot in this fourth quarter as Joe Fitzpatrick is, he's been the go-to running back in quarter number four tonight for the Black Bears. Now coming in, uh, we didn't know of any possession or fumbleitis kind of issues for Jefferson. But if he has a tendency to have that, you probably don't want him in the football game right now. Fitzpatrick again Fitzpatrick falls forward to the 39. What it does is it doesn't allow you to do some of the misdirection because you don't have any speed to the edge that you have with Jefferson in the game. And we talked somewhat about that misdirection that Maine was able to put forward. Even when they were down 21 nothing, they were still consistent in their offensive philosophy about that. But it, if you're going to do nothing more than snap the football and hand it to Fitzpatrick and grind it out, if that's what you're committed to doing, then you're not going to see Jefferson in the game, even as a decoy in that sense. Play clock at one, and Maine will call a timeout with 4.27 to play in the fourth quarter. Black Bears holding on to a three-point lead against Western Kentucky. So we'll keep it here with the timeout called on the field. So Fitzpatrick, he might not be the fastest or flashiest guy, Bob, but he's averaging four yards a carry tonight, and he'll take that all day. Well, I mean, if there was such a description as a possession runner, I think it's Fitzpatrick. I mean, he's a guy, or Fitzy is a... Uh, the coaching staff likes to call him. Uh, you know, he's not going to lay it on the turf. There could be nothing more disastrous at this time than laying it on the turf if you're Maine. I've had a couple of issues getting their linemen back in yeah. the game and actually snapped the ball a time or two to Ferguson, so we'll reset. Yeah, during that timeout, that was Liam Dobson. He had to grab a somewhat dry towel. Dobson moves from right guard to center here. Something to watch at second and eight. Another handoff to Fitzpatrick and not much there at all for Fitzpatrick as he picks up a yard. Masai White again with a tackle. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let the Bells tell the story here on third down. And I also noticed the rain is picked up again. It certainly has. Timeout called on the field. And called by the Hilltoppers. That's their first. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. 420 left in the game. It's third and seven. We'll keep it here. Three point lead for Maine as this ball game coming down to the wire. And it's been a rain fest pretty much the entire game from kickoff. It has, but we haven't seen a lot of fumbles as a result what we would directly attribute to the rain or not being able to handle the ball. A couple of things to keep in mind, if you're a kick or a punt returner, you're going to be looking up into it. Uh, right. I mean, I mean, that's an element you got to keep. I noticed both centers do have the proverbial towels uh, on the back of their jerseys at their waist. Get a good look at it right there. Rain just pouring down here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And it's, it's been steady like this the entire game for the most part. Third and ready? seven. Main four for 16 tonight on third down. Play action, looking for the tight end. It's caught by Dunn for the first down. Julian Dunn tackled by DeAndre Ferris. That's his first catch of the game, or their second catch of the game. And it comes at a huge time for the Black Bears. Just slight misdirection again. So substitute Dunn for Belcher at that tight end possession kind of receiver. That's a pretty gutsy play call. I mean. Let's face it, Dunn is the only player to touch the football in the last two series. It's just been Fitzpatrick and Ferguson. And this buys you another two minutes. Now, Western's going to probably have to burn some timeouts. What they accomplish here on first down now is important. Fitzpatrick fights his way to the 44, tackled now, by Jarrell Green. And now a Western timeout. This will be their second. Hilltoppers down to one. With 3.40 left in the game, 
And Bob, this is this is nothing fancy. The last two drives for Maine, it's just been running plays to Fitzpatrick and stop us if he can. Put the big pass to Dunn to convert on third down. And we've we've lamented all night about third down and both teams just miserable on third down tonight. But when they needed it, Maine is able to convert and buy themselves some more clock. The leverage here is that you're forcing Western Kentucky to burn their timeouts. Maine offensively, just five more total yards than West Kentucky at 328. Pretty balanced, 184 through the air, 144 on the ground. And if I could get my rushing stats right, <laughs> it would be right. You know, when you, when you net it out after those sacks that go against the quarterback. You know, we haven't seen a problem all night with the, the, the center quarterback exchange. That comes into play here with these wet conditions late. Play action going back to the tight end, and Ben Holt says, Drew Belcher, you're not going anywhere. That's a tackle for loss there, too. That'll go in Holt's category for that, uh, that big tackle there. So Mike Sanford calls his third and final timeout for West Kentucky with 334 left in the game. So it has come down to this, third and eight for the Black Bears. So all they did was shift the pass play to the left side when they converted it with Dunn to the right side three downs ago. So if you're, if you're Western defensively, you're thinking, the guys are going to come back with that play again, or will they, right? I mean, <laughs> you gave me the doubt look too, right? You, you, you know, I mean, what are you doing this? If you're, if you're Maine, you're saying, we can't go to the well yet again with that play, or can we? <laughs> right. So I would look for Belcher. Let's see, let's see if Belcher's in the game. Belcher is not in the game. Belcher, he's got the team high three catches tonight, the big play target has been Micah Wright with the two touchdown grabs. Play it's action done. again for Ferguson. He's going for his tight end, Belcher, and overshoots him, incomplete. Fourth down, Deontay Ruffin in on the coverage for the Hilltoppers. So it's easy to be critical of that play because it didn't work. But I'll, I'll contend the play was too deep. It took too long to develop. You ran the risk of your quarterback getting sacked. I mean, Ferguson has really taken well care of the football tonight, but how about a seven or eight yard? How about a play just to the sticks to get you what you need, maybe plus one, instead of trying to trying to go for it all because you had the safety still playing deep coming over in that coverage, and then you had to corner on the outside man to man. That play really didn't have a chance. Punt number nine tonight for David Gelb. As Cray Tries to full main and it takes a main roll as it's down at the three. Wow. What did I say about the nuances of the kicking game just a while back? That's how huge the kicking game is. When you take a look at the score, time, all of those elements and you wrap it in there, you got a punter that can make that punt to that spot in the field. And now you're forcing Western to go 97, 98 yards. It's a 43-yard punt. Cray went the total opposite their direction to try to fool the main special teams unit, but down at the three, what a play. So first and 10 for the Hilltoppers, down by three, no timeouts left. Last time they had the football, scored on a 75-yard touchdown pass, Eccles to his running back, Garland LaFrance. And remember, holding in the end zone is a safety. Eccles starts the drive with a completion to Sloan. Eccles pass complete to Sloan. But he didn't get out of bounds. Nine, you could have adjusted that route another yard and gotten out of bounds, and you did not do that. Toppers go on the ground. Some room for LaFrance to work with, who's been electric tonight. Picks up the first down, stopped at the 20. Clock is stopped with 251. And that's good for a Franklin Bank and Trust Bill Topper. Western Kentucky going tempo here. 
Eccles tonight, he's completed a pass to seven different receivers. Climbs the pocket, now he will take off and run and slides. Picks up a gain of six. That's what happens when you run those double wides out. The middle of the field is open. And your rush is pinching from the outside in. That's a nice run then by Eccles. Second and three to the sideline, just out of the reach of Xavier Lane. Patterson in on the coverage for Maine. And there's Patterson again, and Western Kentucky's picking on him again on the outside. I'm waiting for some kind of twist or something defensively along that front for Maine. Now they're going to move Sheffield back in the kind of in the middle. Now they're going to bring him up. Keep your eye on him. It's on the left side of the formation. Third and three. Eccles trying to buy some time. Finds Lucky Jackson for the first down. Jackson stopped at the 41. Stopped by Richard Carr, the freshman from Philadelphia. Clock is stopped at 208. Play of the night for Western Kentucky, no doubt. Eccles converts there. Why? Because Sheffield was just a half an arm away from sacking him. A little bit of fatigue perhaps now setting in for this main defense. Play action. Eccles a long throw incomplete over the head of Jernigan. Clock is stopped. A minute 56, second and 10. And see, for the offensive line and the defensive line in this situation, this is where you're conditioning, this is where playing in this heat and humidity really comes to play right now. And keep in mind, this front for Maine has been chasing Eccles all night with a lot of success. It's time for the offensive line of Western Kentucky just to buckle down and give Eccles time. Two tight end formation. Eccles finds Fortenberry, his first catch of the game. Fortenberry rumbles his way into Maine territory, stopped at the 35 by Sterling Sheffield. Fortenberry had two catches, both good for first downs last week. Comes up big there for West Kentucky. His first catch coming with under two minutes left in the game. We got another main defender slow to get up. Now keep in mind Sheffield had to come across the field almost numbers to the hash mark on the other side. And I mentioned that because Western came strong side on his side and he rolled out of that. And I'm just wondering if we go back and analyze this and it'll be analyzed on the plane going home if you're Maine because this is that's a crucial play. If Sheffield was not supposed to roll out and pick up Fortenberry to start with because Fortenberry was wide open, but when they shifted that formation and came strong side of his way, he shifted out of it, but he didn't shift out of it far enough. And again, been critical of Eccles so far, but in this drive, he has been money for Western Kentucky. The player slow to get up for Maine. It is Shaquille St. Lotz. That's something to keep an eye on. That's your starting corner who had a big play earlier tonight. It's first and 10 after that gain of 24 yards to Fortenberry. Player late getting out on the field. It's yeah. Richard Carr for Maine, yeah. and now Maine has to burn a timeout. They did. They had 10 on the field. I was counting when I looked at it. <laughs> and the coaching staff there is beside themselves. That could be an important timeout to have in the event Western scores here. And now you're down to one if you're Maine. Western with none. And Western kind of in the driver's seat right here. So, you know, if you're Maine, you're saying, hey, guys, defensively, you need to make one play. we, we got to make one big play in this sequence to kind of stymie what's going against us, whether it be a sack or whether it be a batted ball on a, on a potential touchdown or something, we got to play here because we're getting handed to us right now defensively, and we got to come up with something, and we got to come up with it real quick. What about if you're Western Kentucky here, first and ten? I think more of the same. I think you don't even worry about the clock. And you've had an opportunity now to regroup with the injury, make a couple of calls here in this huddle after the injury. They're going to throw the football because they're going to empty the backfield out unless they're going to give it to LaFrance here. LaFrance, Eccles bobbles it, falls down on top of it. 
loses two yards. Now you really have to pay attention to the clock. No timeouts left with a minute 33. If you're wondering about field goal range, Ryan Nuss has a career long of 44. Still a ways away from getting there. Eccles, a high throw, incomplete over the head of Xavier Lane. Patterson again on the coverage. Third and 12. The tight end, Mikewan Dean, checks in. He's been the leading receiver tonight as far as receptions for West Kentucky with five. Yeah, Mosai Nelson was slow to get up. If he tackles and sacks Eccles in that situation, Graham, I think the game is over. That's how close I think it was because of where you are, how much time you would have burned because the clock would have continued to roll versus the incomplete pass, which stops the clock. Third and 12, Eccles, a lot of room on the backside here. Now we'll try to take off. Eccles avoids one defender before he works his way to the 31. That was Manny Patterson with a stop. And they kept him in bounds. That's crucial, and now Eccles is a little slow to get up himself. And they will stop the clock with 105. Definitely not what you want to see if you're Western Kentucky, your starting quarterback down after taking that shot by Patterson. I remember back to last week, last Thursday in fact, Thursday week ago technically, New Hampshire's quarterback, starting quarterback, knocked out by this main defense. Nothing illegal or about it. But the fact of the matter was is that changed the entire complexity of the game. You got something very similar here because at a minimum, Eccles has got to leave the game for a play. So right now, the ball is at the 31, which would be a 48-yard field goal attempt. Remember, the career long for Nuss is 44. And Coach Sanford did tell us the range for Ryan Nuss is 48. So this is right on the verge of his range unless Western Kentucky looks to go for it on fourth and six. Well, a lot to talk about now. I think you've got to come in and try and kick the field goal here no matter what. Take a look at the wind. There's a little wind. Ah, there's no wind, really. I was thinking a little bit coming out of the east behind him. Eccles still down on the field here. Really hasn't moved a great deal. The entire time all of this is happening, Ryan Nuss has just been getting ready. And it appears that the Hilltoppers will elect to attempt a 48-yard field goal for the tie. Well, and, and the main team as they get Eccles back and he's needing assistance. And you talked about Eccles not getting out of bounds. I made that comment, but you wonder if he was able to, had he been able to avoid that contact, might not be in this situation. So Western Kentucky electing to kick a 48 yard field goal in the rain. Long snappers Ben Reeder. Your holder is Adam Kraus. And Ryan Nuss lining up to attempt what would be a career long 48 yard field goal. Clock is running under a minute. It's a high snap and the kick is blocked and Maine will recover it at the 48. Unbelievable. Maine 47 seconds away from picking up their third career victory against an FBS school. And it would be the first time Maine would go to 2 and 0 since 2013. Jordan Swan with the block for Maine. What an incredible football game. You got uh, about two snaps left. And you will have an FCS over FBS upset here tonight in Bowling Green, Kentucky. 
Just a high snap. You wondered how the weather would play an impact on that. I don't think he got a lot of elevation on the kick as well. No timeouts left for Western Kentucky. What a game for Maine. Dealing with injuries all over the place. And the Maine Black Bears playing in the state of Kentucky for the first time in school history will come out with a 31-28 victory. It's the old cliche. I've only used it once tonight, Graham. That's why you play the game, man. That's why you play the game. There's so many nuances to the game, but I can tell you, as I preached about here in the second half, the kicking game is so crucial in college football, and it came to fruition tonight. Really good football game. It was like three football games all in one, really. I mean, what, like what was said, your biggest takeaway tonight? <laughs> this main team doesn't quit. And when they made the adjustments defensively, it really, really put the pressure on Eccles, and we hope he's well. That's the difference. It changed the whole tide and momentum of the game. And uh, it's very impressive. It's a very impressive FCS football team. And make no mistake, Western Kentucky's a very good football team, too. But there, when elements and the microcosms of the game where they needed to execute, they just were not able to do it. So for Bob Belbin, I'm Graham Doty saying so long for Houch and Smith Stadium in Bowling Green, Kentucky, where the final score, Maine 31, West Kentucky 28. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archive on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.